fight all, all sooner. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So then the board adopted, the, uh, this is a B, I'm sorry. The board voted to adopt and reaffirm its original findings. From, so we did that. That's comfortable. Everybody uh, can have a vote on B, please. And the motion and a second. We've got to go through each one of these as a motion and a second. Move approval. Second. Any discussion? None. All in favor of B. Thank you. All right, number one, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not the general conditions in the neighborhood. I'm not going to read through it. If everybody's fine with what you've said. Or you actually don't even need to do that because that was voted on at the last meeting. That's all taken care of. Yeah. All right. that's so that's they're just approving the, the final document. Yes. Okay. Which I have. The okay. definition of practical difficulty, I think, was the one that you didn't do. So if you'd skip down to C. Thank you. Okay. So I will read this in. This is the section C that uh, was questionable last time. Strict application of the ordinance to the property precludes the ability of the applicant to pursue a use which is permitted in the zone district in which the property is located. The board finds that the appellant meets this criteria because the applicant has uh, proposed additions to the building that would normally be allowed without a variance due to the placement of the building on the lot and the condition of the building. The current dining room is in the rear of the building and moving it to the front of the building and adding insulation will reduce the noise in the rear of the building, which is within a foot of the front and area setback. Without the expansion and upgrades to make the building, uh, uh, sorry, make the uh, building, which is within a foot of the, I'm sorry, building code compliant, the uh, applicant would not be uh, able to use the buildings as a year-round residence and uh, is unable to rent the building or reasonably procure liability insurance for the building, resulting in loss of income. The applicant would not be able to uh, meet the design intent of the Higgins Beach character-based code without the variance. And uh, two, two. So this is a strict application of the ordinance uh, results in significant economic injury to the applicant. The board finds that the applicant meets the criteria because adding a code compliant staircase within the existing building would destroy the value of the historic interior of the home. Furthermore, the uh, house cannot be moved closer to the front setback without significant risk of it being destroyed and, co and the cost of up to $100,000 to move the structure would be significant economic injury. Further, the lot narrows in the front so the structure could not be moved up to the maximum front setback without another variance to the side setback. Finally, without a variance, the property cannot be used as a year-round residence, resulting in significant economic injury. And so can I have a motion on that section? So moved. Second. Any discussion? None all in favor? We have a couple of housekeeping things to do before you move on. Okay. We need to sign that. We still need to vote on this whole piece. Oh, I'm sorry. So uh, I have a motion on uh, accepting the findings of fact and conclusions of law provided as of uh, 14 Perth Street as by uh, August 9, 2017. So moved. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none. All in favor? Thank you. It's unanimous.
plain copy. She put it. Okay. Signed and signed. Okay. And we don't have the minutes uh, as of today, so we'll leave it to the next meeting. Okay. So we'll jump into appeal number 2607. It's a variance request by Patricia Crawford, trustee of the Patricia Elaine Crawford through Revocable Trust, 1111 Street, Assessor's Map U23, Parcel 783. My name is Nancy St. Clair. I'm with St. Clair Associates. I'm here tonight with members of the team for the application, uh, and the applicant is actually here tonight in the audience as well, along with some of her family members. So we appreciate the opportunity to come back before you folks. As you know, we've been uh, before you two times before. Uh, the last time was on August 9th, and the time prior to that was on July 12th. At our last meeting, we had a fair amount of discussion with regard to the building massing, the architectural plans, and received uh, very clear feedback from you folks uh, with an expectation to do some modifications to reduce the scale and scope uh, of the building itself. So we'd like to present to you tonight updated architectural elevations specifically to address criterion number three as part of the uh, variance review. If you recall back in our July presentation, we went through uh, the various uh, criteria for uh, a variance, and this particular item was one that you folks had asked us to pursue additional information uh, for you. So the August presentation was an attempt at that. You folks asked us a lot of really good questions. We do have quite a bit of information in response to that, which we put in our letter, and I'd like to go through that uh, as we go through as well. Great. Thank you. So the first plan that I have up here is actually the first site plan that was presented to you folks, and it just sort of gives you an idea of the location of the building on the lot. As we mentioned, the whole background uh, of this is that the site is uh, being on the ocean front. It has a number of different layers of regulatory requirements, and uh, part of that is being in the frontal dune and in the erosion hazard area. Because of that, we're not allowed at the state level to relocate the building or make any adjustments to the footprint of the building. So throughout this whole process, one of the things that we've looked really closely at was maintaining that existing footprint and location. Unfortunately, at the local level, the building is located in the setback. Uh, and so in doing revisions and, and uh, work to that, what we came up against was the fact that in order to properly reconstruct the building, meet the state standards both for uh, the uh, sand dunes and free movement of wind, air, and water uh, in the dune location, we have to do an extensive amount of rework of the building. And in doing such, what it became clear is that demolition of the building would be the more appropriate thing. We've discussed that uh, with you folks before. So the next plan that I'd like to show you is sort of where we came from. Is that the August plan, Ms. St. Clair? Could you grab the mic for us? Just grab the mic there. You have to turn it on. I think it's in the yeah. no. Can you hear me? It's yeah. on. There you go. <laughs> okay. Good. All right, thank you. So the question okay. I, the question I asked is the plan that you showed that was the last, was that the August one or the previous one? This has actually been the same plan we've presented since July. Okay. And this is the site plan. So we'll kind of delve into a little bit just to sort of refresh everybody's memory. This is the entire site. And as you can see, this hatched line here is the erosion hazard area. So the building sits entirely within the erosion hazard area. This line right here is the demarcation line between the frontal dune and the back dune. So the building sits entirely in the frontal dune. We're also in the shoreland zone, and that is regulated at 250 feet. So that creates this line right here. So we're subject to shoreland zoning 
requirements, our structure is not located within the 75 foot setback. So we don't have that uh, requirement with, excuse me, uh, expansion limitations on being within 75 feet uh, of the resource, which is the highest annual tide <coughs> there. So that's the sort of the premise of what we're dealing with. The lighter green here are the building setbacks. So we have a setback from 11th Street, and we have side and rear yard setbacks to respect as well. So as you can see, the building is very much in the front yard setback <coughs> uh, as part of the site. So that's one of the key issues uh, at the local level. From an uh, existing condition standpoint, this darker brown area is the existing enclosed portion of the building. This lighter tan area, this L shape, is the existing covered porch. From the DEP's perspective, we can enclose that existing covered porch and not uh, uh, trigger, if you will, an issue with expansion in the frontal dune. So that is something that we would be allowed to do uh, as part of that. But beyond that, that's where we're, we're left. We can't relocate, can't expand beyond those, those limits. So that sort of set up the premise of what do we do from here. These two views are just simply a closer in view of this plan here. And this existing and proposed are the same because we have the same building. So that's the basic drawing that we started off with back in uh, July when we met with you folks. The plan that I have here <coughs> is the current plan, the latest plan, the one that's in your packets right now. Uh, Brian has it up on the screen. It shows a little bit nicer on the screen. The blue shows up a little bit better. Brian, I'm on page two of that set. So if you folks remember from uh, the photos that we presented back uh, in the process, we have uh, a two-story existing cottage, the footprint we just showed to you, and we uh, have taken a really close look at what we would be proposing to do uh, as part of that plan. So <coughs> the elevations that you see both here, and this is a lower one we'll get to in a minute, which is the, what we call the ghost plan. Uh, but this elevation right here shows two of the views uh, of the proposed building. The uh, plants that you, I'm going to put that down there, hopefully it won't be a problem. Uh, <coughs> the plants that you had seen in sort of the review process, we, we had quite a sizable building uh, back when we originally uh, brought our proposal forth. That included a third story. We have completely eliminated the third story. The only thing that will be in the attic area are the mechanicals uh, associated with the building. And that's due to the fact that as part of the uh, criteria in order to meet uh, the DEP requirements for free movement of wind, sand, and water in the dunes, all the mechanical equipment has to be up above the first floor level such that there's a three-foot clearance between the lowest structural member of the building and the uh, natural grade around the building. So as part of our design, all of those things that were in the crawl space in the existing building we're talking about, the fuse panel, the, he the heating equipment, all those things that were down in the crawl space potentially exposed to the elements, including flooding, et cetera, are now going to be brought up into the area that was for a living space. In our prior plans, we had, uh, we, as I mentioned, we had proposed uh, using the third story attic area as a living space and expanding the building height and width uh, as part of that creating a third story living space. When we met with you folks both in uh, July and then back in our presentation in August, it was very clear to us that one of the key issues was the two versus the three story. And so as part of our plan, as you can see with the architectural elevations, there is no third story. It's only mechanical space. So what I wanted to do, <coughs> I'm sure you folks have read through I 
So the south elevation, uh, Brian, that's sheet one, you got it there. The south elevation is the view that faces towards the ocean. This is an area that existing, this is an enclosed portion of the building. This is where that L-shaped uh, porch was. We've actually proposed to enclose that. There is a portion of it that is screened in along the front uh, area there, but the, basically within the confines of that existing covered porch, we propose to enclose that on the first floor. On the second floor, the roof of that existing covered porch becomes an open deck area, and we'll get to the details of that in just a moment. So this is a west elevation, so uh, we're looking actually towards, um, let's say we're looking towards perhaps next, probably that would be a good way to describe it. So you can see that's that open porch that we talked about, and this uh, elevation view here you recall from the original building, the dormer was actually projecting out here. We've actually squared it off in this location here. This is the existing porch area, that back porch, if you will, uh, on the northerly side of the building. That's you right here. <coughs> so this northerly porch is an enclosed porch now. We're, we're keeping that, but we are doing some additions uh, on the back side upstairs uh, for that. And the biggest change that you'll see is the original building is sort of this way. We have a dormer that's added on. That's on the 11th Street side of the building to provide a little bit of balance. So in order to show that, we've provided four views with the ghost elevation, if you will. So this is the gray is our, the existing elevations of the building. The white outline, which Brian, this is sheet number seven. You got it up there. So, <coughs> as I mentioned, using this north elevation of the view, we do have a dormer that we've added on this side to provide balance. As the gray image shows, there's already that plane in this location here. You see that there's a bit of a difference between the ridge line of the existing here and the proposed ridge line. That's about eight inches. That was noted uh, in our letter. <coughs> For the east elevation and the west elevation, you'll see that the front facing edge of the second story has actually been moved back further away from the ocean. And roughly that area is over here on that expansion on what would be the northerly end uh, of the building. So just sort of if you envision this kind of slide over there, we're roughly uh, in the same point there. On the south elevation, uh, the view from the ocean, we do see that dormer <coughs> that we've added along what would be uh, the easterly side uh, of the building. So with that, I'm going to turn back a little bit to our discussion. <coughs> One of the things that we had talked about uh, at the last meeting was a comparison between the existing cottage square footage and our proposed plan. So the table on page four of our cover letter provides a comparison for the existing cottage and our proposed new cottage. So <clears throat> as you can see from that table, the enclosed living area on the first floor of the existing cottage was measured at 1,395 square feet. That open covered porch that we talked about, that L shape, that's 578 square feet. That's 1,973 square feet existing right now on that first floor. On the second floor, the square footage in the existing cottage is 854 square feet. As, as we noted, there is an attic area. There are windows actually currently in the attic, both facing the ocean and facing Old Orchard Beach side um, in that air area, but we don't have any living space uh, existing up there. With the proposed new change, the building that you see right now with those uh, ghost elevations that is up on the board and on the screen, we're proposing to utilize that entire first floor. So the net change expansion, remember we can't do that with the, with the dune issues, is zero. We are changing the living space, so we're taking of that 578 square feet of 
open covered porch area. We're creating 119 square feet of that would be screened in. The remainder would be additional living space uh, on that first floor. On the second floor, with that dormer that we're proposing to do and the squaring off uh, that we're proposing to do, we are proposing an addition of 231 square feet uh, as part of that plan. So that is the, the um, information that was shown uh, in, on page four in the table, on page four. So it's important to note one of the, the items of discussion that we had back in uh, the July meeting was a table that we had provided based on the assessor's database information from the GIS database. That had shown that the square foot living area of the existing residence was 1,562 square feet. Based on our calculations and measurements of the building, I'm not sure where that number had come from uh, because the first floor and the second floor, just the enclosed living space was 2,249 square feet. So we had noted that on page four uh, as well. On page five of our <coughs> table, we also provided a comparison, of sort of the evolution of the plan development from the July 12th presentation to our current proposal. And as you can see, if you look through that table, which the um, first floor, again, we're still dealing with the same situation. No, no substantive change with that, with the exception that the newest plan does have 119 square feet of that covered porch area would become screened in. The rest of it would be a living space for that. But again, we're maintaining that same building footprint for the first floor. For the second floor, you can see that there has been an iteration of changes through. Um, we had on the original plan, we had a little over 1,000 square feet of enclosed living area and we had an open covered porch. On the second plan, because our third story got smaller, there was an expansion to the second story in that plan. That was the August 9th uh, plan. And as you can see, with our current plan, we have reduced the overall square footage of the second floor so that our proposed expansion on the second floor is down to 231 square feet, which we had talked about before. The biggest change that you'll see in looking at this table is the third story, the attic uh, location. Originally, we had proposed in July an area that would be 697 square feet of enclosed living area. On August 9th, that was reduced down to 429. We are now proposing zero. There is no living space proposed uh, as part of our plan to date. So as you can see, we have provided sort of a chronology for you folks. I know that there was a, a few questions uh, that had been asked at the last meeting is sort of where, what have you done, where have you gone uh, with that. So hopefully this table helps to clarify that uh, within the process. We also have a discussion in here with regard to building height. And as I mentioned, our proposed building is about eight inches taller than the existing building, and that's to accommodate roof pitch and uh, floor to ceiling clearances within the building. We also have to deal with the requirement for clearance uh, under the building for the DEP standards for the dunes. So there on page seven, there is a chart and calculations which show that. So the finished floor elevation of the building does need to be adjusted. That would be higher with the placement of the piles beneath the building or the piers beneath the building. So the finished floor elevation from its existing location right now would be about two points. Uh, 2.53 feet higher, so 2 feet 6.4 inches higher than it is now. That does two things. One, it provides that minimum of 3 foot clearance underneath the lowest structural member of the building. And two, it also puts us in line to be able to better comply with the changes in the flood elevation proposed for FEMA. So we have, I believe, the new um, Proposed base flood elevation in this area is 15. So you're using, the, I just want to clarify, you're using the new standards? We are using the DEP standards in order to meet the requirements for clearance for free movement of wind, sand, and water. But we checked our numbers against what the changes are proposed for FEMA, and we're confident that we would be 
uh, appropriate with that. FEMA has raised the, the projected elevation to 15, although it's not official yet. Um, and in part of that, our finished floor elevation would be 18.6 on that same datum. So we're meeting that standard as well. So Great. we're comfortable with that uh, program and moving forward. So I do have uh, a narrative that uh, specifically addresses criterion three. That was sort of why we were here. I'd, I'd be happy to read it if the board wishes. Other than that. Uh, would you want this written in, read in or are you comfortable with I don't think the board's comfortable unless you have a desire to do it. It's yep. part of the record no matter what. It is. We've already. Yes. yes. So, again, we appreciate your time. We know you stayed late last time in order to be able to talk with us, and we do appreciate that. And we do appreciate your patience in allowing us to, to come back and visit you again. So, okay. we're hopeful that with this plan and the, the changes that have been made, uh, we're um, moving forward and bringing the building to a point where it is more in keeping with the neighborhood. Uh, and uh, meets the essential character of the neighborhood for that. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anything you'd like to add? No, I think we've been through it. <coughs> yeah. um, I'll open up to the public. Anybody from the public wish to speak to this issue? I'll close the public part of the meeting, come back to the board for questions, comments, motion. I don't have any questions. Um, I, for one, uh, Nancy, I really appreciate the, the thoughtful detail that you put into this and for all your applications, obviously. Um, I am a fan of the ghost plan myself. Um, it's nice to see the uh, existing building and then the proposed building. Um, it makes it a lot more clear to understand what's going on. Um, in addition to the comparison tables, I know we, you know, obviously we've been back and forth on this a few times, okay. but um, for the board really appreciates it and I especially appreciate it, so thank you. The board comments? I, I agree wholeheartedly. I think it did. I think this met what I imagined it should look like. Now, it's just one person, but I, I think you, for me, you've, you've settled that issue. I think it it accomplishes the, the things you wanted to do, which make a good, safe home. Also, it keeps the neighborhood, in my opinion, aligned. Um, what I didn't ask is, did you get any more letters on this, sir? Anything at all? No. No comments. Okay. Uh, what we should do is go through the, the, all of the hardship, even though we were talking about number three. Uh, we've got to go through our seats. We need to go through them all. <laughs> so if, uh, uh, Ms. Nicola, if you want to fill in on these sections here, I think it would be appropriate to kind of fill as we go through these. Uh, yep, let me okay. grab a couple more documents. Uh, you don't have to read the whole response. You can do a summary because it's already on the record. It's already okay. part of the record. Okay. But I just want to make sure that we've, we've answered each of these questions as a board in a single, singular piece. I think you're probably hearing from the board that you did okay. <laughs> I think you're hearing that by not hearing anything. <laughs> So I will go, I will read, um, this is actually, I'll read some excerpts from our June 20th letter okay. uh, that cited a number of different items. Um, the land in question cannot re yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. And I'll just paraphrase this. Um, as the descriptions and narratives contained in our cover letters uh, and, and the materials that we provided for you folks throughout the process, the existing site is subject to multiple layers of regulatory constraints, which include DEP's coastal sand dune roof, FEMA floodplain mapping, local shoreline zoning, and the local zoning requirements for the R4A residential zoning district. All factors combine to limit available options for this site. We certainly do have a lot of more information, but hopefully that kind of summarizes a bit of that. Um, we did also want to uh, highlight with that um, the condition of the building, if you folks recall from our presentation, we talked a bit about the broken floor joists, about uh, the center chimney, about the whole efforts to try to elevate, if you will, I won't say raise, because that can be taken two ways, but to elevate the building uh, and move it, that there were some structural issues that we felt would be uh, compromising on the safety uh, and the process for that. So as you know, we came before you folks uh, to seek the ability to uh, demolition, uh, to demolish the building and to build a new one in its place in the same footprint. Okay. 
The next is the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property. Uh, as the discussions and charts included in our application materials indicate, the existing cottage on this lot is several decades older than any of the surrounding properties and has not been material up materially updated over its approximately 127 year lifespan, other than some interior cosmetics and minor repairs. In, ex in addition, the existing structural and mechanical systems are specifically in need of significant repair and replacement. Since this cottage is between 61 and 81 years older than its neighbors, the need for significant structural repairs and replacement of the mechanical systems is much more urgent than other properties in this area. And we have uh, a fair amount of discussion past that as well. And the uh, granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality, which is the, when we take D first, get that out of the way, then we'll come back. Okay. okay. Uh, the hardship is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Uh, as previously noted, the Scarborough Assessor's Database, the building on the site was originally constructed in 1890. This predates all zoning and regulatory requirements that have been instituted over the life of this approximately 127-year-old structure. No activities of the prior owners or the current owner, i.e. the applicant, have caused the existing building to be non-conforming. Okay. And then C, uh, the granting of variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. So I think you've covered, and the board wants more clarity on that. Okay, thank you. So I'm um, going to bring it back to the board. My, my thoughts are, if you're comfortable with this, is we use the previous information as the record for A, B, C, I'm sorry, A, B, and D, accept the new information for C and uh, comment on that. And then uh, vote. Be comfortable with that? Are there any public comments or letters? Uh, no, none of them have opened the public already. Okay. okay. So uh, as far as one, I'm sorry, yeah. A B, and, a, B, and D, I'd like to take a motion that those are met. So moved. Second. Any discussion on that? You need to state some findings. In uh, what, what we did is we said that we're going to use the information from the previous meetings when we did that. Did we do findings on the previous meeting? I think we did. Yeah. Yeah, we went pretty thorough. Okay. You yeah. The board comes Okay. <laughs> Three times a long time. So, okay. The <coughs> board isn't can, can agreement. Give a second. Okay. Any discussion? Seeing none, all favor? Opposed? One. Okay. And C, the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. <coughs> um, this is where we do need to, to, to comment, as was last, last month, for anybody that didn't see it. Uh, we went through the criteria. And we came to C, and we spent a lot of time discussing what we had for problems with C, uh, the essential character of the neighborhood. My opinion of the plan is it's it's a reasonable build with a reasonable. The square footage isn't the issue to me. It's the design. How does it look? I don't think the square footage is out of line. It's the same vein. I think it looks like it belongs there, and that's really what I was looking for: is a, a building that could match up with the older buildings, but still be successful in its current, its new life. Um, I think you've done that. So that's uh, why I'm supporting C. Uh, let me start down with you, okay? Well, I've been in favor of it all along. So, I mean, they keep on shrinking the size of it down. Uh, I'm in favor of it, but I was in favor of it before. I don't think that we should should have turned it down prior to this. I'm looking at the square footage sizes and the open and covered porches and it's not really a living area. I don't know if it's on any of the other ones that were looked at when we first looked at it, when we had, I think, 2,400, I think, was the highest building down there. I just don't see this still as meeting that. Do you want to elaborate any more on the group with that? No, I just, I just don't think that you can enclose covered porches include covered porches as living area because they're really not. We do this all the time at my office. It's not living area. Okay, thank you. Is that that to me? Yes, it is, sir. Um, I'm fine with uh, um, point number three, given the essential character. Um, 
portion of this application, I mean, the information has been clearly provided in the latest cover letter for this meeting. We've been through three iterations, and I appreciate the detail that's been shown on this. Um, the table of information is especially helpful. Um, they're indicating uh, progress towards what we were uh, inferring in the past uh, two meetings, so I don't see an issue with this item. Thank you. Ms. Shu? I agree with Mr. Hebert and Mr. Maroon. You know, I think you guys have done a good job at taking our suggestions, which, again, we really appreciate. Um, and I think this new design is really going to fit well with that neighborhood and not kind of be such a uh, shock as, I think, the original design. Okay, thank you. Um, so do I have a motion for accepting C? So moved. Second? Sir. Discussion on the motion? I'll just come back and say I think you did a good job. I think this is what we really needed to see. And it also makes the argument for why sometimes we'll table something, even though it may not be the perfect world. It, it's, I think we got what we wanted from this. I think it's a win for everybody. So all in favor? That's four. And opposed? One. That motion carries. Thank you. Thank you very much. The next appeal is 2610, uh, a limited reduction of yard size request by Ryan and Kelsey Jackson, 9 White Sands Lane, successors map U1, parcel 64. from the design company. I'm rep representing the Jacksons in this appeal to the board. So if you want to give us just an overview of where we've been and where we're going, how would right. be great. Okay. Let me give you a brief uh, rundown of what's going on. Um, so I'm representing the Jacksons, Ryan and Kelsey, in a limited reduction of yard size for the property of Nine White Sands. Property is in a CDCR1 character-based zoning district, identified tax map U2, lot 64. The assessor's office indicates that the original building was constructed in 1900. In 2007, the structure was elevated and placed on concrete floors, appears, and the first floor interior space was renovated. The property is bisected by the 75-foot hat setback line from the resource on the north side of the house, of the, of the site. The existing buildings within the setback are limited to expansion of 30% in volume and square footage. The proposed project includes a side addition and an open wood deck being added to the right side of the existing structure. The plans also include an expansion on the second floor towards the front yard above the existing first floor of the building. Also included in the front yard is a projected porch with a roof that meets the requirements of the character base code. The projecting porch and wood deck are considered components that are permitted to be added to the existing building. 
Both of these elements meet the size requirements set forth in the zoning code and are within the allowed encroachment lines of the, of the, of the uh, setback lines. As such, a reduction in the yard size is not needed for those components. The side addition located on the right side of the building meets the dimensional requirements for a side wing as defined in the ordinance. This addition would encroach into the eight foot setback on the right side. <clears throat> this extension will have a kitchen installed on the first floor and allow the existing second floor bunk room to be expanded into a bedroom. The plans also include a new bedroom to be constructed above the first floor of the structure. The existing second floor front face is set back from the front wall of the first floor 14 foot 2 inches. The existing ridge line and wall frame will be extended forward on the second floor to create the new bedroom. The second floor expansion will encroach into the front yard setback from White Sands Lane but will not extend beyond the existing footprint of the house. <coughs> the proposed building design has received the approval through the, <coughs> excuse me, through the administrative review as required by the character zone and has also approved DEP approval for the expansion. Total square footage of the expansion area in the 75 foot setback, setback line is 409 square feet. The expansion will be 222 square, 226 square feet in the, in the setback area. The total volume when I submitted the letter within the hat line was 2,109 cubic feet and the expansion will be 296 cubic feet. Since the letter was presented to the board there has been a small change in those calculations by Walsh Engineering who did the reporting of, uh, and investigating on the building. And the actual expansion um, will be 178 cubic feet more because the volume was inaccurately calculated before and is slightly larger. Um, it was uh, calculated at 2,109 and the new calculations are 2,287. So there'll be a slight available extra volume to expand into. The actual dimensions that we're looking for for the limited reduction of yard size <coughs> are as follows. On the right side, the existing building is 20.3 feet from the sideline, and we propose 5.3 feet. The requirement is 8.0. So we were looking for a reduction of 2.7 feet. The front yard of the building, uh, existing building is 15 feet from the front line. And with the second floor being brought forward, it would come to a point of 15.5 feet. The requirement is 18, so we're looking at a 2.5 foot reduction in the front yard. And that's basically what it amounts to. We've got an existing cottage that's been here for a long time. Uh, it's had some updating done to it on the first floor. Um, the second floor has not been touched, and it is just um, single board wall partitions on the second floor with board doors and sloping ceilings. There's no bathroom on the second floor. There's no closets on the second floor. And so to... Uh, redo the second floor we need to uh, increase the building slightly uh, everything is going to be over the existing foundation except for the wing on the right hand side which uh, meets the criteria for a side wing addition under the ordinance thank you uh, just want to set a couple questions for you mm -hmm. uh, anything you want to add to this um, I think I put in my staff comments um, that this is uh, again a limited reduction of yard size appeal it is eligible for the yard size appeal um, and the board should apply the five criteria under that section section 5b5 for the findings and conclusions if this property would, would they need to come for the variance no matter what because it's inside the is that the building envelope there that add-on I'm not sure I understand under, the question. Under the new plan, the new, the new uh, character-based uh, criteria, would they have to come to this board even such 
So the only reason they're coming to the board is because the dimensional standards can't be met. Okay. The character standards are met, the dimensional standards can't be met with what they're proposing. Could they, if you're asking if they could propose something that would meet the standards, I would say probably. Okay. What they're proposing can't meet the dimensional setback standards as, okay. as they exist. Even with the new uh, character base? Because this is a size, is it? Yes. They wouldn't be here if, if they met it. <laughs> no, I, I just want to understand it and make sure everybody else yeah. does. Cause, okay. cause I'm confused by the question. I'm sorry. No, it's, the, 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 the issue for me was with the new, with the new rules, <coughs> I think they're right. They're saying that they would be allowed <coughs> as a, if it was a building on a lot, correct? Or am I wrong? I'm trying to figure out the, the issue regarding what's an add-on and what isn't an add-on and when do you okay, have to apply? Well, um, as Mr. Wilson explained, the side addition, or the side wing, as it's called, is an addition, an add-on, if you will. I'm on the wrong one. <coughs> so if you look at the screen, this area right here is, is a side wing. That is an addition. Dimensionally, it complies with the ordinance. When it's attached in those dimensions to the building, it comes across and encroaches on the setback by two plus feet. That's why he's asking for the limited reduction of yard size bearing. Could they put a smaller addition on? Yes, they could put a smaller addition on. Okay. So it's about two feet? Yes. That's what I was trying to get. Yes. Thank yep. you. Yep. Okay. Everybody understand where we're going with that? I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea where you're going with that. Well, the only reason I want to make sure I'm understanding, the only reason they're looking for the right side, side yard setback relief is because of this expansion. Otherwise, if they weren't doing this wing, Correct. the right side would not be considered. Correct. But the front is the front. The front is the front. But again, because of the expansion that they're asking for, they're not able to keep it within the 18 foot minimum setback from the front property line. You know, if they weren't going to do any expansion, they wouldn't need to be here at all. <laughs> but they wouldn't need to be here if they just subtract the three feet off of this. That's, that's true enough. It, that's again, what I'm trying to get yeah, a hold of. Yeah. Is, is when, the, mm -hmm. when does the character base kick in as opposed to not? The, the the, everything that they're proposing meets the character code. But because of the position of the existing structure, when you put the compliant character code stuff on there, it's encroaching into the system. <coughs> okay. Thank you. Anybody have any other questions on that? Okay. Why don't we? Um, anyway, we got a bunch of letters here, right? Mm -hmm. Do you need them? I'm I'm just noticing like I got two separate papers that were written on different sides, but times. The numbers aren't the same. No, that's actually, um, Mr. Longstaff mentioned that earlier to me, not to anybody else. Okay. The numbers did change on the first page, second, so they didn't match, right? No. The front yard. On this, on this appeal, Leroy? Yeah, I'm just looking at the front I think yard. Walter explained that. Okay, yeah. You're talking about the other right. appeal. <laughs> I think he explained, is that the difference in the numbers that you were referring yeah, to? Yeah, there's a slight difference in numbers. None of those numbers and volume affect the variances that we're in the front of the board for. The other question I've got is why are we using uh, cubic feet as opposed to square feet? Okay, well in the shoreland zone, if you're inside of the 75 foot setback to the highest annual tide, you are allowed 30% expansion of floor area and volume. Volume is cubic feet, floor area is square feet. You have to calculate both. Uh -huh. You can't go over 30% on either. Thank you. Okay, other questions or comments from the board? I'm going to read in the open the public hearing. I'll read in the letters first, and then we'll open it for anybody that wants to stand up. <coughs> okay, see. So, um, and Mr. Jackson, you're here today? Okay. Uh, just reading the letter that you sent on uh, August 9th. And if you could uh, take the microphone just for a second, I'd appreciate that. State your name and address. Uh, Ryan Jackson. Um, our property is Nine White Sands uh, Lane here in Scarborough. Thank you. Uh, the letter that, that I, I read uh, to me interprets that you and uh, the, the town are on the same page with this. Is that how you interpret things? Or? 
Maybe I'm re reading into the letter. I just want to make sure I'm not. Or, or yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I think so. Before we purchased the property back in uh, in the spring, um, we hired Walt as well as Silas from uh, Walt Engineering to go through kind of a preliminary uh, sort of assessment of the property and what we could do to renovate the property um, if we've made the purchase. And uh, we also met with Brian um, to kind of go through sort of a preliminary concept uh, before we made the purchase. So after we made the purchase, we sort of re-engaged Walsh and, and uh, Walter and came up with uh, more focused plans of what we would do with the property. And um, Walt presented that to Brian and, and uh, received that preliminary approval that, that uh, he talked about in his opening presentation. So I guess I'm not sure if I answered your question, but my, okay. I guess my interpretation is we're on the same page. Um, well, just to clarify for the board, um, the, the design that you see in front of you was submitted for administrative approval. That's part, or excuse me, administrative review. That's part of the, the process with the new Higgins Beach um, character-based ordinance is that any designs need to be reviewed by staff first to make sure they meet the character component standard, the character standards for the, for the main building and the components. In this case, the main building was already there. So we review the components that they're adding to them to see if they meet the dimensional and character-based standards in the ordinance. Staff presented them with their findings in which we determined that they did meet the character-based standards. However, in order to construct them as proposed, they would require a variance. And that's why they're here before you today. Okay. Any, uh, why don't we do your finder now, Mr. Mbass has a comment at this point. Thanks. So um, let's read these in. That was the first letter. I'm not going to read it in. We can talk about it. <coughs> uh, next one is uh, from nine. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, from uh, where is the eight White Sands Lane, which is across the street. Is that right? And I've got a drawing on here. Uh, I'd like to not have to read all of this into the record, but use this as part of the record and make this part of the record. Perhaps you might be able to save you t yourself some time. I believe the author of this letter is here in the audience, so maybe if you open the public hearing. It's open. So it's okay, so, so that Great. maybe offer that. If you'd like, uh, whoever wrote this, would you like to speak to this? You're welcome. It's uh, eight, I think it's your, you guys, is it eight? Uh, Mr. Harmon, yours is the next one. So this one here is... Uh, okay. This is here is Porta, Daniel Porta. That's <laughs> okay. If you'd like to take the microphone and discuss this letter, it would be helpful. That way you can say exactly how you feel as opposed to what's in writing. It'll go into record anyway. But it's gonna, that, my letter will... Yes. I, I, I don't... Yeah, you don't have to... As long as all the more board members have, have read it, that, you know, that, that un expresses my concerns. Uh, so, first of all, Dan Porta, my wife Lois and I live at number eight, White Sands Lane. Our property abuts the applicants on um, both the north and east side, so on two of their, two of their property lines. Um, first thing I want to just say is welcome to the Jacksons, to the cul-de-sac, and to the, uh, to the neighborhood. We're really excited about having uh, the new neighbors, and it's our understanding that they intend to not rent the cottage out, um, and that they will be using it for their own family, which we're very excited about. Um, and we're looking forward to being good, having a good neighborly relationship with them. Um, we did. Uh, we ha I have some concerns, as I've outlined in the letter, about the size of the expansion um, as a necessary, um, uh, as as being necessary um, to have this. Um, you know, to be asking for a limited reduction of yard. Um, we, we spoke, I, I'm pretty familiar with the cottage. I live right next door to it for the last uh, 18 years. I'm an architect. I'm always looking at, you know, other possible um, projects that, you know, we might be interested in or properties that we might be, interest, be interested in. And I've, you know, looked at different, various ways that I might have expanded this cottage myself. So um, the point of my letter is I'm confident that this cottage can be, you know, very nicely expanded, but within the existing uh, rules of the, um, of, the, of the new setback requirements, which, by the way, as everyone knows, were already reduced when they adopted the character-based zoning. So, so those uh, limitations have already been reduced somewhat for them. Um, 
I'm familiar with the history of the cottage in the sense that um, this thing was re, uh, um, it was enlarged about uh, seven or eight years ago, and, and, uh, and an existing engaged front porch was enclosed to make um, uh, additional uh, space for the living area. Um, the bedrooms were expanded, and um, the cottage was raised up to meet the DEP uh, requirements at that time. Um, I'm mostly concerned about uh, one thing. I just wanted to also, you know, make a point about because I do think that they have they've met the 30% expansion within that um, that that set zone that's part of the uh, within the 75 foot. Um, there are some errors in the um, calculations that were done by Walsh Engineering uh, um, uh, initially, and those still show up on the. Um, on the documents today as amount of additional square footage or cubic uh, volume that would be available. I did talk to, uh, spend a con an entire morning going over this with Brian, and, but I still, I think, I, I don't think that we need to make an issue of that in particular because um, it does seem like the expansion within that, um, within that 75 feet does meet, meet the 30%. Um, my concern is the, um, is the, um, the criteria that they have outlined that um, is, it, is this expansion necessary for them to have reasonably um, the same use of the property as everyone else in the, um, in the district. And, um, and, if, and you take that and overlay the, um, the, uh, the shoreland zone over that. And uh, my feeling is that um, they could do up to what they're proposing is 880 square feet um, added onto a 1,368 square foot cottage, um, which is a 64% increase in the existing cottage. Now, in, in my opinion, simply by backing this thing up, um, as was um, just, just discussed earlier on, the 2.5 feet off the front on the second floor and the 2. Or the two feet eight inches off the right hand side of the building, um, you could still have about a fifty four percent expansion, and I think that that would give the applicant everything that uh, a very reasonable use of the property. I further further looked at this over the last couple of weeks because I really want these guys to be able to do the, a nice expansion that meets for their that meets their family's needs. But I'm convinced that that expansion can be done within the setbacks that are currently um, in force with the new character based zone. I, 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 I've come up with several different schemes where you could is just it, even just shaving about 35 to 50 square feet off the the, what they're presenting, but rearranged slightly, um, would accomplish that. The second big thing, so, 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 but they're asking, and I'm very sensitive to the idea of the open space that's down there, and that it, the, uh, an expansion shouldn't be bigger than it needs to be or is allowed to be, because the whole purpose of the shoreland zone is to preserve open space. And I'm not talking particularly about views, because I know that's a subject that's not even defined in the ordinance. What I'm talking about is the initial intent of the shoreland zone, and that that open space doesn't really have to have anything to do with humans at all. It has to do with birds, wildlife, um, going from the front dune to the back dune, and the keeping the, open, the area open, as well as this is one of the most popular uh, walks along the back dune or along the, uh, in Scarborough, is that when people make that point, I know because they all end up at my property when they get to the end. So, um, you know, people like that sense of openness, and I think that's what the Sherland Zone is all about. I have outlined in there the many different, in, in my letter, the many different um, geological environments that are included in the um, in the White Sands neighborhood, and I think that that uh, that's all protected by the Sherland overlay, and that needs a, a slightly, uh, you know, an extra uh, criteria for the evaluation of it. Um, the second big thing in terms of other than blocking uh, open space and, and visual access to the resources, um, the other main issue for, uh, 
for me as a neighbor is the parking and the snow removal. This is a major issue on our street. We are not, in, we don't have any kind of an association. It's, it's more or less the neighbors who, you know, mostly Nelson and myself, Mr. Harmon, who have been taking care of the plowing over the last 18 years. He's done it a lot longer than me. So there is just no place to put the snow. And when you have, um, um, you know, we just, right now the way that the, all the, um, all the lots on the uh, street, the way we set it up years ago when we um, did improvements down there, was that we had planned that everyone would have a driveway that went up down the side of their house so that you could completely remove your vehicles out of, off the right of way, which is commonly owned, as well as out of your front yard. Now, everybody on this parks in the front yard, I understand that, and, and on occasion or as, as people need with extra guests and everything. And, and some people, and people do actually park in the right of way. And I think as neighbors, we're, we've been agreeable to that as long as one person's use of the right of way doesn't inhibit someone else's fair use of it. But the fact that what they're proposing now is that that side wing's only going to be 13 feet from what would be the, what we would consider the front yard, uh, the residential front yard. That's really not enough to park a car. I'm hoping, I'm proposing, or I would like them to push that side wing back another two feet, at least allow 15 feet for a car to pull completely out of the <coughs> front residential yard. And even though they probably would still leave somewhat space and they wouldn't come right up to the building, they'd still technically have 15 feet. And then, you know, if they want to park their overflow people, you know, in the, in the resident, in, um, on the street, as some of their neighbors do, I think that that's, I don't think that that's going to be a problem. The problem is when they move, if, if they get the variance and they move that building within five feet of the property line, there was, there's no possibility at the, after that, of ever being able to pull vehicles completely um, down the side, of, down into the side yard, uh, which is how the street was laid out. And I understand that, you know, the new character-based zone has, you know, allows these reductions, but they have a limiting factor here. Um, you know, unfortunately, they have a very large side yard on the left, which is on the side of the resource, and obviously they can't park there, but I don't think that they're, I don't think that they need to remove the possibility of, of, of altering the site plan so that it's impossible to ever pull all your vehicles completely out of the right of way and completely out of the front residential yard. So that's a, a big issue for us, um, that especially I'm um, the neighbor that lives right next door. This property has historically been very difficult for my wife and I because it's not just the owners, but when they rent the house and then the renter's guests come, they park anywhere. I can't get, if you can see by the site plan, I said it, if they're just a few inches over hanging into the right of way, we can't even access our driveway on the side of the house. So um, this is a major issue um, for parking and for snow removal. Um, I also don't think that there is any specific physical characteristics about the lot at all, which would preclude them from doing this expansion within the setbacks. I've thought of at least two different ways that they, that they could accomplish it. And I also think that um, it will have some effect on the essential nature of the character. Number one, it, it obviously, um, if they can't, if we reduce the, the typical site plan of that neighborhood so that you can't pull your cars off the street, that's a major impact on the neighborhood to its detriment. And um, also, you know, the addition of the front porch will be something that's, you know, I, I understand why it's in the character-based zone, but on White Sands Lane, every other house has a front stoop or a side porch. So no one has a porch of that magnitude or that size that encroaches into the, right, into the, um, the front residential yard. I, I think that's... Thank you. Anybody have any questions? What I want to say. I mean, I, if you, they, may, they may after the fact. Thank you. I'm sorry. They may have some questions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. All uh, right, Mr. Harmon, did you want to speak to your letter? My name is Nelson Harmon. I own three year round cottages located at two, three, and seven White Sands, White Sands Lane, as well as a four vacant lots out front, in lots number 23, 25, 27, 28, Shipwreck Lane. 
I have owned these properties for over 50 years and have seen many changes occur in the Higgins Beach neighborhood, some good and some not so good. I write to you today in regards to a variance appeal that has been filed by Ryan and Kelsey Jackson at 9 White Sands Lane, which be, be my next door neighbor. And it, and it directly abuts my property at, at White Sands Lane. And although I'm for change and allowing others to enhance their properties, I feel this variance will affect my abutting property and others located at White Sands Lane. After reviewing and following the plans, letters and variance appeal in the code officer last week, I feel that the variance to encroach my property line is unnecessary and there's plenty of space to change both the depth and the addition towards the rear property lines versus the side property lines. I feel that if this variance is granted, it will affect how I could someday enhance the use of my property and will drastically affect the privacy use and overall value. Also, if you've done a site walk, you should note that the lack of adequate parking area on the, all, the, all, all, all the properties, most of the vehicles, uh, Park in the current right of way, having, having plowed White Sands Lane for many years, there's a lack of area to push and place the snow, which greatly affects the ability of any type of safety vehicles to access White Sands Lane during the winter months. Allowing a front setback variance in addition to the porch is unnecessary and unsafe, and the budding residents located on White Sands Lane. Although on paper these changes seem very minute. As the current building sits and how White Sands Lane lays out, I feel it would be a much bigger impact on the enjoyment, value, and mostly the safety of all the residents of White Sands Lane. I ask this letter you take these factors into account with your vote to allow the variance and other options that are currently in 9 White Sands Lane could enhance and use the enjoyment of their property even more. Thank you, Mr. Honor. Anybody have any questions at this point? Okay, thanks. Again, make them back. If you'd like to take the microphone, name and address, that would be great. Uh, yes, I'm Maureen Niles-Sear, and I live on 4 White Sands Lane. I live there year-round, and I've been there for 17 years. Thank you, Mr. Um, I'm the sole occupant of my home. Um, the new uh, Jackson home is diagonally across from me. So visually, uh, I probably will see that renovation uh, extension more than anybody. Um, and I totally approve of the plans that have been drawn up. Uh, I, not, I suppose this has nothing to do with your approval, but um, I have come to respect um, the quality of family life that the Jacksons exhibit, the love way they love their children, they play with them, and they're really little. I think the oldest is probably five or six. And uh, there are three of them. And this home needs to be big enough to accommodate them as their bodies grow and expand, unlike myself um, or Dan, uh, who has grandchildren that come, uh, you know, at times throughout the year, and a son that lives with them a bit of the time. But for me, um, I welcome making that home possible for them. And as the children grow, I think it's good to have a large kitchen. I've discussed this with Dan. I, I disagree with him. Uh, like you can make the kitchen a little smaller, you don't need this. But as people grow, and I understand that the Jacksons have um, grandparents in the area, so they will probably be visiting. But um, I think that the house is done with dignity. I think it um, matches the code. As far as visual appearance, um, I probably am most affected, maybe I said that already, because it's in my view and it does block a little bit of the water from the front, but um, you know, it doesn't bother me. I have so many beautiful views. I, you know, we're, we're overly blessed at that end of the beach. And uh, so I, would like to see approval of the plan. And I do want to point out, and I did discuss this with Dan also, um, although Dan is concerned about the uh, fact that 
they can the Jacksons cannot pull their cars like in that side. Um, up until a couple of weeks, two weeks ago, after I mentioned this to Dan, he and his wife and his son uh, always parked right in front of their house in a line. They never park in their right side. And I pointed that out to him. You I want him? To, I need you to do me a favor and not not uh, talk about Dan anymore. Oh, we need to keep on task with the point. Okay, okay. thank you. Yeah. Okay, but I make my point there is that um, I don't even want to hear about that point. No, my point is that I think that. Uh, the Jacksons can pull in uh, enough. You know, they have the two cars, and if they put one sideways out front, it's no different than most people do. Um, so um, anyway, I, I approve of it, and um, as Dan said, he welcomes them to the neighborhood as good neighbors, and uh, so I, I think that it's a wonderful addition to where we are. Thank so. you. I appreciate it. And I'm Anybody? sorry, I... I didn't mean to be negative like that. It's okay. Thank you very much. Um, anybody wish to add anything? Any, anybody wish to speak? And you're welcome, Ms. Porter. You, you had talked about it there, so you're welcome to take the stand again if you'd like to speak on it. And I, I ask you to keep it directed to me. Okay. Okay. So um, I, I, my, my, my big concern here is this house with the proposed renovation, with a 64% expansion, will go from a typical size home that's maybe average size on the on the block right now to it will be now become the largest house on the cul-de-sac, even larger than we have a two unit, which I know is illegal, but that's 2,000 square feet. This is going to be 22 something. So this this expansion will be will now so so now to, in order to say that to have to have reasonable use like other people in the district, are we saying that now you have to become the largest house? So then, so my concern then becomes what happens now, my new neighbor, my next, my neighbor in the front, his house on the beach front, the ocean front is now for sale too. What standard then gets applied to that? Does reasonable expansion mean that that house now has to be allowed to become the largest house? I, you know, the rooms, the kitchens, the, the bedrooms, everything in the house is already uh, larger than my kitchen, so I mean I, I don't even like to do these personal comparisons, but I have reasonable I have a reasonable size kitchen that I can prepare meals for dozens of people at a time. So, you know, I, I think that we have to go to the you know to look at the reasonableness and is it possible that this even if you want to take the full square footage, I'm convinced that it can be done within the square within the setbacks. And for me, that's the number one criteria. If they don't need to ask for the variance in order to have the expansion, that's what we should be looking at. Thank you, Mr. Okay. Porter. Appreciate Thanks. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, nobody else wish to speak to this? I'll close the public hearing part of this meeting. We'll come back to the board. We'll go through the uh, criteria. Can I make a few comments? Sure. Go ahead. <clears throat> first of all, um, going back to what was first stated about access to the beach area and people walking through and cutting off uh, access to the beach, um, that's not existing now anyway. The yards are fenced in. People can't cr cut across this yard to get to a beach. As well as neighbors' yards, some of them are fenced in also. That's number one. Number two, brings up parking. Evidently, he has not looked at the... I'd like you to just keep the, none of the negative talk about another person if you want to talk about your arguments, why it's okay, that's fine, but I don't want to go back and yes. forth. Yes, well, this gets into the side addition. Okay. Okay. Under the character code, the side addition only has to be 10 feet back from the front wall. We moved it back 13 feet for a reason. And the reason we did is that the existing house already sits 15 feet in from the to the to the building frontage on the second floor. So the parking area is not 13 feet deep. It's from the property line to the building for the parking area, and that's why the addition was placed back where it was. Um, the other thing that was brought up was about the front porch. The front porch is a component that's added to the Higgins Beach Character Code, and the component is not just something that you can do if you want or don't have to do if you don't want to do. It specifically says it must be done in the character code. 
a porch up from six feet up to ten feet in width. So we we put the porch in there to satisfy the character code. So let me just make sure I hear this right. But so that does not require the variance. So you don't want the porch? No, we didn't say that. Yeah, you did. No. It was brought up that he said he doesn't think the porch is necessary in his comments. And I'm saying it's in the character code a must-do. I, I, I want to be careful about the must-do part. Um, do you care to elaborate on that? Because I think you get into dangerous territory when you start talking about you have, the town is making somebody do something. And that's what I'm hearing. For new structures, it is required. Thank right. You. Existing structures is not. So, go ahead. Right. It's not required <clears throat> unless it's a new structure, but in trying to make the building compatible with the code, that's that's there. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, the other thing about the size of the building, uh, if you were to look at the existing second floor plan, uh, on the uh, <coughs> existing house, I'll get out here in a minute. You get that up, Brian? Yeah. You want the elevation or the floor plan? What's that? Elevation or floor plan? Floor plan. Oh, I'm sorry. there are three spaces on the, sec on the second floor that have sleeping quarters. One of them measures 9.4 nine by 9.7. Nine by nine the other one is 9.7 by 15, and both of these have sloping ceilings within that space. And the third one is 6 foot by 11 foot 4. Three very small bedrooms, at least two of them very small. One of them smaller than the average bedroom per house because of the sloping ceilings. The expansion that comes through with the rework of the addition on the second floor forward, which if you look at that plan, is on the upper left-hand side where it says first floor roof. That's where the expansion in the second floor is going to take place out to the existing front wall. So it does not include any lot coverage increase. The bunk room, so-called, at the bottom of that picture, which is six foot wide, now, that's where the side addition expansion takes place. And in that side addition, if you were to bring up the second floor plan, Brian, as you, if you remember the plan was just up, there's no closets up there and there's no bedroom in the bathroom on the second floor. That's the first plan. That's the second floor plan for the proposed. Right. Is that what That's you want? second floor. And if you go look at that uh, lower part where it says bedroom, where we expand it out towards the side line over the side extension, you'll notice there's also a bathroom that's also inserted in there to serve the second floor. The second floor only has, under proposed plan, only one bathroom. It's not being elaborate. And the uh, bedroom that's created in place of the bunk room interior is 10 and a half by 12 foot. It's not a huge room. The front bedroom remains the same size it is now. The middle bedroom on the opposite side of that, Brian, remains the same size that it is now, those two bedrooms. The front bedroom is to the left, upper left, and that's where the master bedroom is going to go uh, over the existing building. The master bedroom itself is not very big. It's basically 12 by 14 on the inside, and that too has sloping ceilings on it. So we are not trying to create a building that exceeds a building mass that is not needed for the spaces that this family needs. They do have three children. 
This, this creates four sleeping areas on the second floor, which will be used as the family grows. And their bedrooms are not very excessive in size at all. And I might say they're smaller than what an average house would be <coughs> for the second and third bedrooms. And again, there is only one bed bathroom on the whole second floor. I have tried to incorporate some closets in the bedroom, but if you look in those, the upper right-hand corner in the middle, you will notice there are still no closets in those bedrooms. I placed the closets in the hallway for those bedrooms. The other two bedrooms do have a closet, but we are not trying to maximize space for the point of maximizing it. The owner wants to keep the cottage looking like a cottage. If we reduce the side wing extension, the bedroom would be actually too small to accommodate the space that's needed for that room. We would then have to relocate the bathroom over the first floor of the building. That would completely change the outside design of the cottage and make it look more like a two-story square box house than the cottage that it is now because it would take up the shed roof area over the front porch or over the side porch. Uh, which is enclosed for the first floor bathroom. So we have gone through a lot of debate as to the design of this building to get it to fit the property. Could it be done smaller? Um, I might say yes, it could. But it wouldn't accommodate the needs of the people who go to live in the house as those rooms become so small that the expense of expanding them to that, to that degree would not be a usable fit for the, for the family. Now, the side addition under the ordinance could have been up to 17 and a half feet in length coming out from the house. We opted to pull it back to 15.4, which requires a small variance, only for the standpoint to get the space that's needed to accommodate the family that's going to live in the house. And the bedroom above that, even though the extension is 15.4, part of that expansion is the, is the bathroom that has to go up there, and the bedroom is not that big. So we have done a lot of thought as to how we can expand this house with all the parameters we had to work with, with the 30% volume, 30% square footage. It is actually smaller than what it could have been. And we opted to keep it looking the characteristic of the house the way it is now, we opted to keep that same style of house in order to, to make it look better in the character of the, of the uh, Higgins Beach community. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to close the, if I close the public hearing panel, I'll come back to the board. So, uh, board with questions, comments? And then I can jump yes. into the uh, jump into the, the items separately. For yeah, I, mean, I just want to clarify, I mean, while we're sympathetic to the individual family that is trying to make this expansion, I mean, it, that's kind of irrelevant as to what they're trying to accommodate, correct? It depends on the board member, but I would I would agree with you. Okay. I mean, I mean, we can't Every board member can each variance. I mean, we can't, you know, pass something or not pass something considering how fast the size of the family and things like that. Um, you know, I mean, personally, I'm very sympathetic to that as someone who recently relocated in the last few years because I have an expanding family and of my own. I mean, kind of the sacrifice you make to live in Higgins Beach, on the beach, if you have a smaller house. Thank you. Um, anybody else? A quick thought. We, we can go through the, um, the requirements, the practical difficulties. Everybody ready for that? Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um, doing limited reduction. Limited reduction. I'm sorry. Thank you. Yeah. So a, here we go with the first one, okay? So, Wilson, you ready? The existing building to structure on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to July 3rd, 1991, while the lot is a vacant, non conforming lot of record. Yeah, according to the town records, records, the original building the property was built in 1900. It has been renovated over the years. The most recent renovation took place in 2007, but this renovation did not alter the footprint of the existing structure. And, and those renovations were confined just to the first floor. Okay, thank you. The requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Yeah, the most recent renovation of the building concentrated on just the foundation and the first floor. 
The second floor contains very small rooms with single thick vertical board partitions and doors. There is not a bathroom on the second floor. The area has sloping ceilings and there isn't any closets in the sleeping area. The proposed expansion will allow for additional second floor area to include a bathroom, a front bedroom, and the elimination of the six foot bunk room, which would be replaced with a full bedroom in the side wing addition. The proposed plan will allow the kitchen area to be relocated into the first floor of the side wing and create a more, uh, an area that is more desirable within the house. Okay. Uh, due to the, the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard sizes. The location of the existing building on the property creates a need for a front yard reduction request. The need to locate a side wing addition to the right side of the building is that the 75 foot hat setback line location prohibits any structure from being extended toward the resource which eliminates the other sides of the building for the addition. The CDCR one character based ordinance would allow a wing expansion up to 17 and a half feet and still be code compliant. We propose a, seven, a 15 foot four extension in order to create a reasonable first floor and second floor area. The restrictions on the property, with the restrictions on the property, it would not be practical to construct the enlargement above the first floor. Yeah, it would not be, I'm sorry, it would not be practical to construct the proposed enlargement above the first floor of the side wing addition in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Thank you. Uh, the impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, or new building or structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood would not be substantially different from or greater than the impacts and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. No, we don't think it is, no. <coughs> uh, no, I'm sorry, not at this point. Uh, the public hearing fire is closed. Mr. Wilson, is your, your, no, actually, no, you can speak to that. I'm sorry, go ahead. He's not the public, he's the applicant. Yeah. <laughs> thanks. Um, thanks again for, for hearing me. And I wanted to, uh, I wanted to, um, I'll, I'll, I'll try to address that question, but I think most of the comments I have from hearing what people had to say are, are relevant to that, that point. Um, just again, appreciate, appreciate everybody's time <coughs> here tonight. And I, I appreciate, regardless, good, bad, or indifferent, I appreciate everybody's right to give their opinion on all, on all of this. Um, I just want to make sure one thing's clear. Um, Karen, I know there's like a lot of emotions about people who like my family want to make this about my family or whatever. Like, I just want to make sure the board, this isn't about my family. This is about, this is pretty black and white. I run a couple of businesses. I have a lot of property. Like, I understand this is black and white. So we have a process to follow when we bought this property. We have a process to follow to get an exception to the setbacks. And we've tried to follow those processes. So Anna Walt and some other folks have kind of made this about my budding family and whatnot, which is great. But the fact is we're not really here to talk about um, if people like the character of zoning or don't, if people like the size or don't. We're really just talking about two setbacks. So I just want to make it really clear why we really would like the setbacks and we don't think it affects, to answer this question, we don't think it affects um, the rest of the neighborhood. Um, the biggest, the biggest, the house has four bedrooms now. It's going to have four bedrooms. The house only has a three-quarter bath. We keep saying a b one bath, but the house only has a three-quarter bath. So we're trying to get a full bath into this house. So it's just a cottage at the three-quarter bath. The second floor is not heated. We're just trying to have a simple second floor that's heated. Um, so I just want to make sure people are clear. Like this, I just don't want to make this about my family or emotions or anything. It's just the facts of, of what we're trying to take this cottage from and make it, which has kind of been in our plans from before we made this purchase. Um, there's been a lot said, which is a little bit surprising about parking. So the parking area now is only from the setback. So the, and this, again, Mark, I'm trying not to go off too much, okay. but okay. to your question about affecting the neighborhood, the parking now is only um, 14 feet off the road by, let's call it, plenty of width for two cars. We're making an adjustment so it's 27 feet off the road. So in my estimation, you can park four decent sized cars. You certainly can park two very large cars in that parking area that we have. And we're trying to make some accommodations for a couple other spots when there's overflow traffic, but 
as far as affecting a neighborhood and parking, just with all due respect to everybody, I know I know Mr. Harmon talked about the depth of the addition affecting parking on the front. Um, the variance on the front towards the road is only for the second story. So it's, with respect to like plowing and things like that, like the building's already where the building is. We're just asking for the second floor to be to the edge. So you know, with all due respect, but I, I don't think that affects affects anything to do with plowing or whatnot because we're just bringing the building to where the outer edge already is. It just happens to be a couple of feet over the setback. And on the on the setback um, on the side, um, you know, we're talking about a bedroom in there that is 10, um, 10 and a half feet by 11 and a half feet and a kitchen that's 12 feet by 11 feet. So I don't, again, I don't think we're not talking about um, you know, to the need of size or whatnot. I think we're 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 uh, not putting an unjust uh, you know situation on the neighborhood. And and uh, the last point I wanted to make is, um, and, and I talked to Dan about this a couple uh, once when when we sat with him and Lois, Kelsey and I sat with him and Lois. I mean, an alternative to this building to Walt's Point is a lot bigger. And there's buildings being put up at Higgins that are 3,000 square feet that are three stories high. And we absolutely have no interest in that. But to accommodate four bedrooms and a bath and a half and the basics of what we're trying to do for a very expensive investment, um, we don't. We think we're shaving off a lot compared to what if we wanted to come in like a lot of folks have and totally maximize and take full advantage of everything under our um, capabilities, we could be a lot bigger than, than this. So we're just asking for these couple of two, foot, two plus foot setbacks so we can live in two story just get the minimum, get these four bedrooms to the right size, get a full bath. And um, so I just wanted to just, <laughs> before we, things close out, I just wanted to sort of take off the emotional part of it. These are just the facts that were, that were, uh, that are important to me as kind of a business person slash home, homeowner. So I appreciate it. Okay, thank you. Just a clarification on Ms. Shoup's comment. Uh, just for record, not for you. I did not see it as an emotional comment. I saw it as a factual comment. Uh, so just to take a okay. Clarified. Okay, thank you. Um, number five. Number five. Number five. The applicant has not commenced construction or large expansion building or structure for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested, so that the Board of Appeals is not considering an after fact application. I'm assuming that's you know it. No. Okay. Thank you. I come back to the Board with uh, questions, comments, thoughts. Yes, sir. Um, I just have one question on the, on the proposed deck. It looks like a corner of that deck is within the 75-foot setback from the ocean. Yes, it is. Is that allowed? Yes, because the resource protection line is at an angle, and the house setback line is at an angle to that corner. So it is within the um, it is within that little piece right there was within the setback of 75. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah. Okay. If you notice, the, we're removing the existing exterior stairs that come off the back of the porch. Yeah. And that square footage we're removing exceeds the square footage that we're filling in. Oh, so you can swap. Yeah. It's, it's also part of the it's part of the 30 percent expansion, right? You you can the, the part of the structure that's inside the 75 feet you can expand by 30 percent. You can't expand toward the water or toward the resource, but you can expand. So they're actually expanding backwards and sideways. Yeah, but I'm just talking about the corner. That's that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, but that corner is within the 75 foot right. setback. Right. It's part of the expansion of the existing structure that's in the setback. Okay. I'm not going to argue with it. <laughs> it. It's all of that triangle that's in, in the setback, that can be expanded no closer to the resource. Are we, are we okay on that? I'm okay with him removing the stairs in the back and using that <laughs> for that little okay. corner. Well, um, I don't want to go into... Okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's we can use that explanation because it works just the same way. Yeah. I think we're ready to go to the questions. Pardon? I think we're ready to go to the questions.
think we're ready to go into the questions. We've done those already. Oh, we've done those already. Right. Going. Oh, you want to go line by line? Yeah. I'm not. I'm not there yet. Oh, okay. Um. I, I'm. So, I'm, I'm struggling with this one. I. I don't understand. It's two miles your feet, but it, I don't get it. I, I don't. Number one, I think you've got a challenge with you've got the next one right next to you that's struggling with it. I don't see the compelling argument to meet the uh, reasonably necessary. I, 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 I don't. I don't. Have, I don't have that compelling argument. Being able to expand it larger than what it, it, this is proposed is not an argument. You can do that. If you do it inside the envelope, we don't have any control over that. So that's not really an issue. But I don't see the. the I'm having a hard time. Number one, we usually don't go outside the envelope anyways, but this allows that because it's, it, it meets it. I don't have a problem. But the reason why I asked the first question, that front can happen anyway. We don't need to approve that. Is that correct? No. <laughs> well, I, thought, I thought we talked about earlier that they could do that because it's part of character. The second floor, the existing structure is close. The existing structure is closer to the road, to the front property line, right. than is permitted. Yeah. So it can exist, but they're proposing a second story addition that lines up with that. So it Was too. That higher? Yes. Okay. So that, that's so it's vertically expanding too close to the road by a couple feet. It's, uh, <laughs> it's hard to look at the existing and the new because they're not the same angles. Well, it's, just, it's the same views. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Of. It's difficult to. See. It's it's not the same as seeing it superimposed over, <laughs> like over one another. All right. When Walt gets a computer, he'll be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So that, that's what I'm struggling. I, I don't know if other board members have comments on that or not. Um, the um, I think everything else I'm, I don't have a huge problem with. Um, I do think that there's a good argument to be made for the existing structures. And again, the, the, the setup of what happens next. And everything gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, there's reasons for those. But that's just my thoughts. I'd love to hear other people's views. I think they can accomplish what they can within the setbacks. And I don't think it's necessary to be asking for these. We have to get the information on the record as we talk so that we can make yeah, sure it's I, I So I need to hear where you're going from this as opposed to just voting. I, I agree with your comments. I mean, again, I think they have something that they can work with. I'm not seeing the necessity behind um, all the extra space. You know, I have apartments where the uh, bedrooms are that small and, you know, the living area is big and you make up for it and you find other ways to do it. And um, so, you know, I think, it's, I think I feel like they do have something that they can are you talking about both sides or are the the front being different than the side is the side being okay or not okay the front being okay or not okay or what do you think because you got two components Correct. on this Correct. yes um, I mean I, I definitely think the side wings seem unnecessary um, and um, again I think you know some of the neighbors expressed the fact that it's you know making the house a lot larger and bigger than the other houses in the neighborhood um, in regards to the front you know heard your testimony on the parking. Uh, it's definitely questionable. Um, you know, I understand that the situation is hard, and I know we've had an appeal before where we need someone to get rid of a front porch or a side porch because we were concerned about parking. Not that we're saying we're doing this today, but um, I think it's something to think about. Um, I don't live in Higgins Beach, so I don't know it as well, so I'm relying on the neighbors. When we have neighbors who have lived there for a very long time, who own multiple, basically all the property surrounding it, expressing concern, I take that to heart. Yeah, but that's not true. Um, Ms. Wilson, I'm asking you not to speak. So for my, my um, I'm less concerned about the front yard setback at 2.5 feet, but the, again, the side setback, the right yard, the right side yard, 2.7 feet, I feel as though, you know, with respect that it can be accomplished um, without asking for this reduction. And that's pretty much where I am with this. Um, my explanation of that would, would have come, will come again as we go through, you know, point by point. Um, 
this is a, the reason for the separation, just so you understand where I'm going with this, is this is an opportunity for us to discuss the issues. When you're finding the facts and, and conclusions of law, you're actually finalizing those thoughts, but they've got to get out of the table so that they're discussed and heard. Uh, anything on this side? Um, all right. I, I'd like to propose that we, we divide the question and that we say the separate from the high side setback and separate the front because I'm not supportive of the side, but I have no problem with the front. I don't no, know. I'm sorry, I can't. I, I, I don't know. I don't think we can do that, can we, Brian? I mean, this is an application for both. We can't you can split. split the question. Yeah, I think you can divide it up however you want to to make it make sense for you as you go through your findings. Do we um, need to ask the applicant if they want to split it up or if they want well, to? No, well, I don't think the, the, the issue isn't to approve one and not the other. I think it's, it's, it's all one request. But in order to understand it, what the issues are with each, I think you can talk about them separately. Is that what I'm hearing well, you I'm say? thinking both. I'm thinking one is I have no problem. This is what brought me to the first question at the beginning of this meeting, whether or not that could stand on its own without having to go to the board. And I may not have expressed it properly, but that was what I was trying to get at. My understanding is no, it can't stand separately without coming to the board. Right, because of the second story expansion. Okay, that's the part I missed. But the request is for both. So you can't approve the front limited reduction of yard size and not the side. You, you must deny the entire thing. You, and then they have to come back with a new proposal for whatever. You're not required to do that. That's a way that's done. You've got multiple choices. It's not the only way it can be done. We typically follow a lot of its rules, which meets that requirement. I'm offering it as a suggestion. If the board doesn't want to do that, that's absolutely fine. But uh, again, I'm just trying to figure out the other thing I'm trying to figure out, which is exactly what Ms. Lonska says. What is, where is this pressure point for the board? I, I don't have a problem with the front. So I have no concern with that. I do have a problem with the side. I think it's a legitimate argument. I don't think the front is consistent with the plans, the, the, the character-based plans that, that are allowed and are actually Mandated. Let me just offer something. You, your job isn't to decide whether or not it's character-based. Your job is to decide, is the limited reduction of yard size, does it meet the, the criteria that are stated in, in the ordinance? Character, no, I, character, I character throw that away I and, say, one does, one does. and say, does the front or the side or and, and, and the side meet the standards of the limited reduction of yard size? Don't get into the character. That's well, not, not even a criteria. The character ties to what you can put forward But it's or not, not a criteria. Not the way it looks. Not the way it looks. I'm talking about setbacks. Okay. okay. I'm, sa I'm just going to tell you. I'm saying this one last time. The okay. criteria are right here. That's what you review. That's what I'm talking about. I'm done. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Other members have comments or thoughts on that? Well, I know you want to separate them, but I think it, it kind of comes back to the reasonably necessary that we did and um, so I think you know the front is that necessary okay I don't think it's necessary I think they can accomplish what they can what they want to within the building envelope they need to make some changes to it and that's that I think we should move forward the application and if it's approved it's approved and if it's denied it's denied thank you and here at the center. I really need some comments as, as far as what you're thinking so that we can help uh, justify whatever decision we make. I mean, if you want to comment, we just moved from a place that we would have liked to have bigger. We now are in a place that we are bigger. Is it reasonably necessary for us? No. But do we like it more? Yeah. With two big kids? Yeah. Okay. Anything like that? What is the... Uh What is the side yard setback that's being requested? How many feet? Two and a half. I guess two and a half. Two point seven feet. Two point seven feet. Two point seven feet. It's good. It's, that's, it's good to leave over five and about five and a half feet instead of eight. 
The setback is 8 feet. We want to come in 2.7. It's going to leave 5.5 roughly on the setback. So it'll be about 5.5 feet from the sideline. <laughs> it really seems to me that you could do that without coming to us by just changing the side size of that side wing. Just making it wider and not quite as long coming out the side. Okay. Do you have a motion? For further We're not splitting it. It's obvious there's no desire to split. So there's no that was just a suggestion. And it's not that's you're fine. Go down through one through four or yeah, the for a boat. Section C, one through five. First, I got to have a motion to be able to do anything. So do we have a motion on the table, and then we'll go through these items line by line. Okay. Uh, move to approve appeal number 2610. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Um, I, yeah, you're good. Yeah, right. move to approve motion 2610. Uh, as, pre as, pre as presented. As presented. Yeah. Okay, do so I have a second on that? No, I'll second. Okay, so let's go through the issues line by line. Uh, the existing building structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard sizes requested were erected prior to 1991, although the lot is a vacant, non conforming lot of record. I see no problems with that. No. All in favor of that, that being met? Opposed? Are we yes on that? Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't see it. Uh, the requested reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. And you want to start uh, out of there? Is that? Is that? Did I take that, Mr. Do you want to start? Oh, I mean, I think I've already commented on. That. This is the part where it actually goes on to the, the official records, so that's why. Should we repeat that? And Correct. Okay. So as I said before, um, I feel that we have all expressed, or some of us have expressed, that they have an envelope that they are able to build in without this require or this application at all, and I don't think this is necessary. I'd have to agree. Um, I feel that you, you can build within the envelope without requesting the setbacks. Yeah, like I just mentioned, I mean, is two feet great to have? Yeah. But is it reasonably necessary? I would probably say no. I believe that they could make the addition basically the same size, but within the setbacks, the existing setbacks. So. Uh, when everybody made these comments, are you talking about both the front and the side? Or do you want to change any comments on I mean, the front or the side? Brian was pretty what's right with what he was saying there. I, I don't have a problem with the front like you, but, but we can't split it. Well, we're not gonna, I'm not going to split the question yeah. anyway, but the, my, my, I want to get on record again what we're comfortable with, what we're making for findings of fact. I would be more likely to approve the frontal setback if it was just presented as that. Uh, agreed, but because they are together right. and I disagree with the side setback, I disagree to both of them. I agree with Mr. Hebert. Okay. Yep. Assume, I'm in the same place. I uh, I personally don't have a problem with the front. Uh, I do think it meets the requirements. I think it ties into the big picture. And I look at the big picture when I try and make a decision. Um, I do think that the exercise is not needed. Uh, all in favor of number two being met? None. Opposed? And five. Next one. Due to the physical features of the lot and or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. I'll start. Uh, Ms. Shoup, you want to start again? Well, yes. I mean, again, I think this kind of comes to the necessity of, you kind of feel, or I feel that they are able to build within the, what they have, the envelope, without having to come before us. I agree with Ms. Shoup. Um, I believe they can build within their existing envelope. Um, 
and that they can still maintain their um, maintain an expansion within their current envelope without asking for the setbacks. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, I appreciate the fact that they didn't go to the maximum, but by the same token, I think it can probably be done within the envelope. We have had things that have come before us that have really been pushing the envelope and going the maximum the whole way, so I appreciate the fact that you're not trying to do that. <coughs> yeah, it can be, uh, I think that they can make the expansion within the existing setbacks without any problem. Okay, so just repeat the question. To do the physical features of the lot and the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion and enlargement on new structure and conformance with currently applicable yard size requirements. So we're saying... Okay. All in favor of uh, three. I'm actually, I had some a piece in there. I do not believe that uh, it's the physical features of the lot. It's just a lot. It's just a lot, and it is what it is. Huh? They can do things with that lot that uh, it just has nothing to do with the lot's features have nothing to do with it. There's no, there's no cliff or anything else there that's interfering with it. So that's my position on that. I don't believe it meets it because of the fact that it's just a standard small lot of Higgins Beach. Okay, all in favor of number three being met? All opposed? That's unanimous. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Um, can I'm sorry, right in the middle of the Can I ask, what are you, are you voting on two separate things? We're voting on the, one? No, no, we're we're voting on the entire package. On the so, entire package. Right. And you can come back if we decide as, an as, as a whole vote, I think you can see where it's going, but as a whole vote, you can come back with a, a different plan. You're welcome to do that. So you could do that, uh, what are the procedures that you're going to have to go through that, for that. Um, does that make sense? I think I understand. I just don't want to get bogged down to this thing about if you deny this package, we can't come back you for a year. Back. You can come back because if, we, if you come back with the same plan, no. But if you come right. back with just the front, right. yes. That would, you'd be, I'm with you. That'd be, that would be substantially different from the original. We'll be here next month. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the impact and effects of the enlargement expansion of new building or structure and existing use of the neighborhood will not be substantially different from a greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirements. And you both just seem to be on a roll, so I'll come down with you. to this, if we were talking about the impact and effects of the enlargement expansion or new building of structure on the existing uses in the neighborhood, I feel as though it would be substantially different um, because of the comments uh, based on the existing buildings in this cul-de-sac already uh, and that they're coming forward for this appeal asking for this, uh, uh, asking for this setback. I think that they can accomplish this without, you know, um, without asking for these accommodations. So they can go forward, go ahead, and make these expansions to the building currently meet the existing codes without coming forward for this. Thank you, Ms. Shukuri. You want to? No, I mean I think we've kind of been through this before, and I agree with Mr. Hebert. Um, I don't know about substantially different, but I think you know again we've heard from people who live in the neighborhood, and it is it is different. Thank you. Um, I would kind of disagree on this one. I don't think it's going to have a sus substantially different effect. I mean, there's houses all over Higgins Beach that have a substantially different effect. Okay. I kind of think that they meet this one. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and the reason why is just the, the reason you think it meets it is it, it just well. I mean, if you change an enlargement by two or three feet, one way to the other, what's the difference? Okay, good. Uh, the impacts and effects of the enlargement expansion and building a structure on the existing use of the neighborhood will not be substantially different from a greater than the impacts and effects of the building structure, which conforms to the yard size requirement. 
I tend to agree with exactly what you just said. I, I don't. I believe that's probably not, in my opinion. Uh, but uh, all in favor of number four being that. And opposed? One. So it's four to one. The applicant does not commence construction. Uh, I'll say that's a pretty easy one. Uh, all in favor of number five being that? Not unanimous. Okay. We come back to the board for a, uh, the, uh, the final vote. And uh, so any other discussion prior to vote? Okay. Just to reiterate, uh, Mr. Wilson, you, that would meet the threshold. If, it, if, if you come back with just a piece on the front, that's enough to consider it substantial because you're changing more than the footage. So could we just table it tonight till we come back with it? No, 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 we got to kill it because it's going to be a totally different proposal. Okay. Okay. If it, it looks like it's not going to go. But we already tabled it. I'm sorry. We already tabled it once. Does they have to wait a year or two? No, they do not. Okay. Well, it depends on what they come back with. Based on what, what my comments with the dividing the question issue, I don't have a problem with the front. I do have a problem with the side. So okay. they'll need to come back with a front if they want to do that. If they came back with both a front and a side again, that wouldn't meet that threshold. Say they dropped it down a foot. Can I? Right, I'm just go ahead. Procedurally. Just to clarify, if they came back with a side wing that met the setbacks, that would require the board's approval anyway. So, so if they just came back now asking for only a front setback, that would be substantially different because they're not asking for a side setback. Okay. That's good clarification. Thank you. Uh, you know, so it's, in other words, we're not eliminating the prospect of a side wing here. Which I think the applicant knows, but it's the it's the reduction of the yard size variance that we that the board is objecting to. I think we're all pretty clear on the, the fact that we're supporting the front and not really supporting the side. <coughs> One of the reasons why I was trying to. Do we have to clarify today if we support the front or not? No, you do not. No, no, no. no. It's just it helps for two reasons. Number one, we're documenting what our reasoning, our logic is. Uh, we're explaining to the applicant so they can hear what our reasoning and logic is, and that that would be fair, practical, and reasonable. So, um, as uh, just to finalize this one here, I can't support this amendment, this approval because of the side and the two and a half feet. Some could argue that two and a half feet, what's the big deal, and, uh, and why can't you vote for that? Well, it's two and a half feet. What's the big deal? Make it shorter. But that argument goes both ways. So it, it may be only two and a half feet, but it can go both ways. And um, the reality is it's reality. I, I, the house is limited. It's, a, it's just the truth. So I don't see, see that this meets that threshold for two or three. I think the others meet it just fine. And again, my personal opinion is I don't have a problem with the front. And I would, unless, if that came back as proposed, I'd vote for it. But that's my only my vote and only my opinion. But I, I have no problem with stating that as a fact. That's where I'm at. Anybody else wish to make, make a comment before I we would, vote? I would concur with what you said. Anybody else? Any none? All in favor of the, the uh, approval to the request of 20, what is the number again? Uh, 2610. Yeah. Opposed? It's unanimous. So, uh, I think, you, I think you've heard as best as we can clarify. Um, if you came back, and I think Mr. Longstaff put it perfectly, if you came back with a plan that was signed on the front, on the side, I think you'd get this, the front without my personal opinion, again, is it wouldn't be different. But that's where it sits. Uh, thank you very much. At the end of the meeting, you can if you'd like, but they, right now we, we, we keep it uh, going, okay? Sure, absolutely. Maybe a two-minute recess. We're going to take a little break between this one and the next one. Yeah, when we have a chance, uh, we'll take a uh, three or four-minute break here.
expressed by Thomas Michelle Melander. Um, Melander, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. 6 Pearl Street, Assessor's Matthew 2, Parcel 81. And if you'd like to take the stand or have any representative, feel free to take the stand and explain what you're trying to do. We'll go from there. Walter Wilson from Design Company, and I am representing Tom and Michelle <coughs> Melander in the application before you. Thank you, Ms. Wilson. Has, did the board get in the packet the pictures of, of the existing building over the decades by any chance? Photograph? Yeah. No. I got a couple extra ones. Sure. Well, I'm representing Thomas and Michelle Her uh, Melander in a quest for a limited reduction yard size in order to renovate and vertically expand the house located at 6 Pearl Street in the CDCR1 district. Property is tax map U2, lot 81. The property contains 4,980 square feet on a lot that measures approximately 50 foot by 100. This property is improved with two-story residence and a freestanding garage that covers 1,490 square feet or about 30% of the lot. The variance before the board is a request to reduce the setbacks required so that a vertical expansion can be constructed utilizing the footprint of the existing house. The project will not increase the existing lot coverage and the increase in the building height will be less than the limitations placed on the property by the CDCR1 and DEP zones. <coughs> the existing house was originally built prior to 1930 and measures 29.2 by 39.4. When the house it was constru uh, originally constructed it included a front porch and over the years the front porch has integrated into the first floor area and modifications were done on the main house roof resulting in a building style and shape that is uh, shown on the existing house plans. The home has a concrete foundation with a partial full, full height cellar and the remaining cellar is a crawl space. Although, although the house was remodeled by the previous owner in 1991, the Melanders are looking forward to changing the first floor plan, the second floor layout and reframe the roof. The existing building does not meet the architectural style envisioned by the Higgins Beach character-based ordinance, and the existing roof configuration does not allow for a vertical expansion that would accomplish their needs. The existing house includes four bedrooms on the second floor. The proposed plan would have three bedrooms on the second floor, and it will allow room for two, for two bedrooms and a home office up on the third floor attic area. This expansion will require that the second floor walls and the roof be removed, the second floor walls will be reframed in a front facing gable. Roof with dormers will be constructed to accommodate the rooms. The vertical expansion will be located above the existing building foundation. The existing structure is located within the right yard setback and the front yard setback. The proposed vertical expansion will require a variance in order to convert the existing two story building into a two and a half structure as shown on the plans. <coughs> The exact dimension requ uh, reduction requested. On the right side, the existing building is three and a half feet from the line, and the proposed will be three and a half feet from the line. Required eight feet, so we need a reduction of 4.5 feet. The front board uh, yard second floor setback is 16 foot nine to the second floor facade. Proposed is 16 nine, required 18, so we need a 1.1 foot reduction on the second floor. And the pictures I gave you show what the house looked like in 1930, where it had a front gable roof design. And in 1940, the roof was completely changed. And in 1991, the renovations, that's what it looked like before the renovations. And the lower picture in 92, after those renovations were done, which is what the building looks like today. And the proposal that we have in front of you changes the gable roof back facing the front similar to the 1930 
although, of course, it's a different shape and everything, it's back to that style of house with the gable face in the street. And like I said, there's no increase in the footprint of the building. It's just a vertical expansion we need in order to accommodate the renovations that the owner would like. Thank you. Um, anybody have any questions, comments? We get some letters. Just one second. Just one. Just one second. Um, no, again, uh, the uh, field that they're asking for. Um, the house qualifies. Um, uh, it appears to be the correct vehicle for um, reductions that they're asking for. Thank you. I'll have one letter. I'll read this in. Uh, this is in favor of 6 Pearl Street. It's from uh, David and uh, Karen. Uh, Karen Fillinger. Fillinger, okay. Uh, David and Karen Fillinger, 8 Pearl Street. So I'll read this in. Uh, to make me concern, as residents of 8 Pearl Street, Scarborough, we are uh, wanting to express our approval of Appeal Number 2611 for a limited reduction of yard size submitted by Thomas Michelle Millander of 6 Pearl Street. We are the owners of the property immediately adjacent west of the Millanders. Uh, uh, we have reviewed their plans for the renovation of the dwelling and fully endorsed their application for a variance. And that's uh, received on the 6th. Open the public hearing. Anybody from the public wish to speak on this issue? How's that? You're welcome to, if you like, feel free. I'm Tom Melander from uh, the owner of the house at 6 Pearl Street. I just wanted to first apologize that I was remiss in not having put together a letter for the board beforehand, as some other people have done. If I had thought that's why that was necessary. Uh, this is uh, just, uh, I'm not sure that the character of this has been expressed. My family is growing. We have a number of grandchildren and more on the way. And my wife and I do intend to be moving up here permanently sometime in the next couple of years. Uh, that's really the, the reason for the expansion. Uh, we, there's really not much more to say. So thank you. Thank you. Okay. Why don't we go through the requirements? Uh, the, building uh, the existing buildings or structures on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested were erected prior to 1990, July 3rd, 1991, so the property is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record. Uh, like I said, the original building was constructed prior to 1930, according to the town records. Um, you can see by the photos dated over the years that it was there prior to 1991. So I guess that satisfies that part of it. Okay. The request for reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties are utilized in the zoning district. Well, like I stated, that this, this home, the expansion that has taken place uh, meets the uh, Higgins Beach criteria um, uh, for um, um, compatibility with the character code it's also received a DEP approval to do the expansion. Um, and we believe it's reasonably necessary for the owner to enjoy the house the way he is, as the proposed renovations to the existing property will, will allow the owners to enjoy the home uh, that's fitting to their needs. The renovation and architectural changes convert the structure to a gable front building, again, more within the cat uh, compatibility of the codes. Um, the renovations meet all the current size and bulk standards within the district um, and is found to meet all the character standards that's required under the code for a vertical expansion. Okay. Now, due to the physical features of the lot or the location of existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct a proposed expansion and enlargement or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. The original building was constructed well before existing zoning was created, and the location of the structure on the property is within the setback lines that do exist now. 
The expansion proposed is vertical and does not increase the lot coverage. And due to the location of the existing structure on the lot, it would not be practical to construct the proposed expansion in conformance with the currently applicable yard uh, size requirements. Uh, the impacts and effects on the enlargement, expansion, new building, or structure on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different than from or greater than the impacts and effects of a building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Uh, the vertical expansion that's proposed. Uh, will not have any in, uh, different impacts and effects on the existing area than if a building was built of such size that meets the, cu the current setbacks. And you haven't started anything? No. Um, horrible questions, comments? It's pretty straightforward. Can we just uh, clarify something, Mr. Wilson? Um, the foot and a half, you're, you're staying right in the exact same footprint? Right in the same footprint. No change. Okay. Um, Except you're adding a little bit on the back deck. It's all vertical. There's nothing being added to expand the existing footprint. The back deck? There's a change in the back deck, but it's just changing the length and width that occupies the same square footage. <laughs> but that changes the footprint. Yeah, but no increase in the square footage on the footprint. I know. Um, Mr. Longstaff, question for you on the 1991 change. Did, did that reach the level of tripping the ability to do, come to the board? Or did it not meet that threshold? And I didn't even hear back then. But what's your opinion on that? The 1991 change? They built, they, re, they remodeled the house in 91. But they didn't do away with the structure. No, no, the structure is still the, it's it's still the original structure, original foundation, everything. So, so that meets the requirement. I didn't know if there's a, yeah. is a percentage. If they of had demolished the structure, that then they they then have, have defaulted or or lost their ability to use that argument. Okay. Thank you. That was my only question too, simply because they put 1991 on that. Well, okay. Again, it um, wasn't completely. Anybody right. have any questions or comments? I have a motion. Time. Okay. Uh, I have a motion. Make a motion to approve appeal number whatever. 11. 26 Second. Okay, now let's go right to the requirements again. Uh, the existing <coughs> buildings are structured on the lot. Number one, I think, is easy, easily. Well, because of the change, I just want to get it on record. Uh, the existing buildings are structured on the lot for which the limited reduction of yard size is requested to be erected prior to July 3rd, 1991 of the lot. Is a vacant, non-conforming lot of record, and uh, per the uh, code enforcement officer, the work that was done in '91, finished '92, does not trip that level, uh, so that's not violated. It's just important to have it on the record. There. Had they torn the building down and restarted, that'd be a different conversation. I, mean, I don't want to put words in your mouth. Is that accurate? Mm -hmm. okay, thank you. Uh, I included in your packet the building permit from the 1991 renovations, and written right on it. It's limited to the interior structure of the building. The setbacks, it said, not allowed any existing change in setbacks. And the foundation they put under it had to maintain the height of the existing first floor. It's written right on the thing. So there was all the renovations were done internally. There was no external structure change other than replacing some windows. Thanks. I think we're all set with that. Okay. Uh, all in favor of number one being met. Opposed? Uh, unanimous. Number one. Okay. Number one is unanimous. Request a reduction is reasonably necessary to permit the owner or the occupant of the property <coughs> to use and enjoy the property in essentially the same manner as other similar properties that are utilized in the zoning district. Okay. Whoever would like to start, feel free. I mean, I'm just not familiar with taking speech that well. So, I mean, I think um, when it says similar, you know, same manner as other similar properties, it's kind of, I think I'm turning to the board and to, you know, the applicant here to maybe clarify that a little bit, what the surrounding area looks like. I don't know. Surrounding areas all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it fits within. And it's just vertical. Sorry. I've got absolutely no hang up with that at all. I agree. Okay. Um, regarding the number uh, two, I, I don't have any, we don't have any, in my opinion, ability to deal with this. I don't like the fact that it's going up so high, but it's legally <coughs> allowed. It's allowed to go up that high. So whether or not I like it or not, it really doesn't have anything to do with it. Um, again, it comes back to the 
maximum use, but I, I don't have a problem with it based on the reality of what we're working with and what we consistently have done in the past. So all in favor of number two being met? Janice, uh, number three, due to the physical features of the lot and the location of the existing structures on the lot, it would not be practical to construct and propose expansion, enlargement, or new structure in conformance with the currently applicable yard size requirements. Just going up, but it's not really an issue. Anybody else want to bring in that? Well, I think, like they said, the house is built before the zoning ordinance, and then it wouldn't be here but for that. And I think they simply just want to make a vertical expansion. Okay. Uh, I tend to agree. I, I don't think it, uh, it's a problem. All in favor of number three being that. That's unanimous. Number four. Impacts and effects of the enlargement, expansion, and new building of structures on existing uses in the neighborhood will not be substantially different from or greater than the impact and effects of the building or structure which conforms to the yard size requirement. Again, I mean, you know, they're just going vertical, so I don't think it would be. It's best going horizontal. Um, again, the the comments made, I, it, like as, as you say, you're going with WDC. Uh, you're going with a. Um, vertical expansion, not the horizontal, so I don't see an issue with this. Okay. I think we've all seen the lighthouse down there. If anything were to challenge it, that would be it. <laughs> <laughs> um, but the issue with this, you, you're fine with it? Fine. Not far away. I, I think that um, we have a neighbor, that, that neighbor right next door that doesn't have a problem with it. I think that if, if there's a question to that, we've, that's why we announced these things to the neighbors. Uh, that implies to me no response other than a positive one. Um, implies to me that this, the neighbors are comfortable <laughs> with it, so uh, that makes it easier. On four, favor number four being met. Unanimous. Uh, the applicant has not constructed anything so far, and uh, all in favor of that being met. That's uh, unanimous. Yes. That's all unanimous. Okay. So the final the, um, approval of. Uh, 2611. 2611. Uh, as requested. So, uh, anybody have any comments on the, on the entire plan? Seeing none. All in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. You're welcome. Is, um, Great. A practical difficulty variance request by Richard and Julie White, 14 Ashton <coughs> Street, Assessor's Map U2, Parcel 58, Field Number 2612. Mr. Wilson, you're going to be exhausted here today. Okay, I am representing Richard White and his request for a practical difficulty variance in order to renovate and vertically expand his house at 14 Ashton Street. The property is identified tax map U2, lot 58. The property contains 2,980 square feet on the lot that measures 50 by 60. This property is improved with a two-story residence and a freestanding garage that covers 1,100 square feet, or 36 and 0.7% of the lot. 
the variance before the board is a request to reduce the setbacks required so that a vertical expansion can be constructed utilizing the footprint of the existing house. This project <coughs> will not increase the existing lot coverage in the, in the increase in building height to be less than the limitations placed in the CDCR1 zone and in the DEP back doom requirements. Um, the plan has received administrative review for the compatibility with the CDCR1 zone and we also have re received DEP approval to do the expansion. <coughs> the original house was built in 1900 and measures 22.6 by 34.6. When the house was constructed it probably had a front porch and over the years the front porch was integrated into the first floor area and the roof was modified to increase uh, some second floor use. The second floor joists are two by six and have been sisted up in order to try to carry the load. The existing roof rafters are two by fours, 28 inches on center, and they have been reinforced over the years to, tr to maintain the roof loads with some two by eights. The existing structure members that now exist do not meet code requirements and not conducive to expansion that is proposed. The owner desires to redesign the first floor with an open concept layout. This means that the existing bearing walls must be relocated and the second floor joists must be removed and resized. The existing roof structure would also be removed <coughs> and the second floor would be reconstructed with a new roof system that includes dormers creating a two and a half story building. The existing footprint of the building will not be increased and the renovations will be above the existing foundation. Due to the location of the existing house on the property and the proposed vertical expansion is within the setback lines on the left front and rear areas. The list for the dimensional reductions are, this, are, are such that the left side has an existing of 5.2 feet, proposed is 5.2 feet, required is 8, so we need a variance of 2.8 feet. The front yard, uh, rear yard is existing 13 foot 2, the proposed is 13 foot 2, and required is 30 feet under the new ordinance to set back in the rear yard, so we need a reduction of 16.8 feet in the rear. The front yard is existing 16.8 feet to the second floor of the house facade. Proposed is 16.8 feet, required is 18, so we need a variance in the front of 1.2 feet. Uh, these variances are all needed to accommodate the existing position of the house on the lot that was there prior to zoning. Um, so that's what we need to do. Um, and we are looking for a practical difficulty variance. So under that, uh, we have to answer those seven questions and also we have to qualify for a practical difficulty, I guess, in order to be heard for those things. Um, as such, I put together the following explanation for practical difficulty that we're looking for. The practical difficulty variance is a request being brought forward to obtain relief from the dimensional standards. Uh, the 50 by 60 foot lot in the, uh, in the strict application of dimensional standards would result in a building envelope 12 feet deep and 34 feet wide. The applicant is proposing to renovate the vertical and vertically expand the existing residence, which will result in a dimension, dimensional reduction request stated above. Uh, the Higgins Beach character zone requires that the building design must obtain administrative review for compliance with the standards of the ordinance. <coughs> this project has received approval for the design, proposed design, and therefore the use of the property is permitted in the zone. Um, in other words, the proposed project um, building use is, is permitted, not the setbacks. That requires a variance. This project will utilize the existing building foundation, which is located partially within the setback lines. A strict application of the dimensional standards would therefore preclude a use of property which is permitted in the zone. A strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance would also result in a significant economic injury to the applicant. The building envelope on the property is only 12 foot by 34 foot. The character based ordinance only allows the structure to be 30 foot in width. So therefore the effective building envelope is 30 foot by 12 foot. <coughs> 
if the re if the yard reduction was applied for and granted on a 30 by 12, you could get five foot more and make it 30 by 17 for a building envelope. But that would also require a, a variance. <laughs> the existing foundation, if you had to work within the in that. Uh, Building out envelope would require, uh, foundation would need to be removed, the ground leveled out, stabilized, all new utility lines, water lines, sewer lines would need to be relocated, and the existing driveway, grass, landscaping, rear patio would also have to be redone. So therefore, this would result in significant cost that would, that would produce a much smaller building than exists on the property now, and it would result in a significant economic um, um, injury to the owner. The project proposed project meets the design standards of the Higgins Beach Ordinance, and as such, the use of the property being permitted in the zone and the strict application of dimensional land, uh, standards of the ordinance would preclude a use of the property which is permitted and would also result in significant economic injury to the applicant if the variance request was not approved. And again, this variance actually it's not an additional variance than what's already needed because the building location is where it is and those setbacks it infringe on the zone setbacks now but in order to go vertically we have to obtain a variance in order to go vertically up within those setbacks Well, did you have, uh, you all set, Mr. Wilson? You okay, let's we'll continue or you have more to say? I'm all set. Okay, good. Take over. Uh, let's, we've got letters here. Okay. Is this one? Mm -hmm. Is this one here? Uh, yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is from uh, Don Benson. Uh, it's for 14 Ashton. He lives at, uh, where he actually has the property at 11 Ashton. Uh, we have new owners of 11 Ashton and just yesterday received a letter notifying us of the appeal for 14 Ashton. Given that the meeting is tonight, we can neither attend nor write a letter, so I'm emailing you to let you know that we, as neighbors across the street, do not, in bold letters, have any issues with the uh, proposed variance and plans, which I have reviewed. Thank you, Don and Christine Benson. That came in today at 9.58. No others. I'll open the public hearing. Anybody from the public wish to speak on this? No? I'll close that part of the public hearing. Come back to the board. We'll go with that. Mr. Wilson, if you're ready, we'll go through the requirements and practical difficulties. Um, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. <laughs> the existing residence was built prior to the passage of zoning regulation does not meet those setbacks standards of the ordinance. The property is 50 foot by 60 feet, which makes the lot non-conforming. Also located on the property is the garage in the westerly corner of the property. The proposed construction will not increase the existing lot coverage as the expansion will be vertical above the existing residence. In order to renovate this home, <coughs> the unique circumstances of the property size and location of existing structures on the property creates a need for a variance. Uh, the granting of the variance will not re produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or fair market value of abutting properties. The proposed design has received the administrative approval required by the CDCR1 zone. The renovation work will result in a home that meets the character-based zoning ordinance and will not produce an undesirable change in the neighborhood character and will not have an unreasonable detrimental effect on the use of fair market value of abutting properties. And the practical difficulty is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. The location of the house on the lot, which predates zoning regulations and the inability to expand the house horizontally because of lot coverage restrictions, results in a proposed vertical expansion. The existing residence does not meet the building setbacks imposed on the property of the zoning ordinance and creates the practical difficulty that the applicant is asking relief from. And uh, the, no other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except the variance. Because of the lot size and the location of the existing house on the property, there is no feasible alternative to the applicant except the variance. Uh, the grant advance will uh, result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with surrounding properties. 
The granting of the requested variance will allow the applicant to renovate the property and make it compliant with the Kingdoms Beach character-based zoning ordinance, and the proposed building design is more nearly in conformance with, in, with the desired architecture that is related to this district. And the granting of variance will not have an reasonably adverse effect on the natural environment? No, don't disturb anything. Uh, and you're not, the property is not located in part or in whole within a shoreland zone as defined by MSR uh, 838? No. Uh, you are in a, just for clarification, it is in a, it, not that zone, but it's in the, the lesser one. It's in right? the back dune. Back dune. So yeah, there's a lot of things to this. this. This was originally scheduled as a uh, side yard reduction variance. Uh, it was scheduled for August, but in August um, we realized that the rear, reduct, the rear reduction exceeded what we needed, so we had to come back as a practical difficulty because of that. And Brian said it was determined that he was eligible for the limited yard reduction was not proper, and we had to come back for a practical difficulty. Thank you for clarifying that. Okay, uh, the only other one, I think you've already answered this, but the practical difficulty, uh, the dimensional standards, those provisions of the ordinance which relate to the lot, lot coverage, frontage, and setback requirements, and the, the practical difficulty part of uh, VB6, a v case where strict application of the dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which variance is sought would both pre preclude a use of the property which is permitted in the zone in which to is located and also would result in significant economic injury to the applicant. And I think you've explained that at the beginning of that. Is that mm -hmm. you feel comfortable with that or you want to clarify it? Actually, I actually did explain it already. I read, yeah, you, I read my You did. I just wanted to make sure that yeah. they got it in, in sequence. Right. Yeah. Basically what I'm saying there, if you had to re abide by the strict uh, um, uh, setbacks of the zone, you'd have a 12 by 30 foot window, and, the owner, and, if, and if the owner wanted to renovate the house, he'd have to actually tear it down and build it up within those restrictions, and it would be too expensive to do, so he'd suffer economic injury if he had to comply with the standards. Okay. Uh, comments, questions from the board, or a motion? I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 26. 12 as presented. Second. Okay. Any discussion on the motion? Let's go through the items. Uh, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstances of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. Ms. Blaze? Yeah. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's a 50 by 60 foot lot, half the size of a, a standard lot down there. Okay. I'd agree. There's nothing more. They need some circumstances of the property. I mean, it is what it is. Okay, thank you. I concur with Mr. Crockett and Mr. Blaze. Again, I mean, if that's not what the neighborhood is looking like, and that's not typical for that, then I agree. Uh, need to be interested in due to the circumstances of the property, not to the general condition of the neighborhood. Um, I don't. I would like a clarification from Mr. Uh, on this one. Uh, the neighborhood down there, I don't, we don't have a map to take a look at it. Is that universally a problem in that direct neighborhood, this, the footage? Because remember, the issue on <coughs> the neighborhood is if it's a neighborhood which is all 50 by 100 and everybody's got the same problem, it needs to go in a different path. At least that's how I understand the rule. If the neighborhood is, if it's a standalone, there's only two or three in the area that are like that, then it doesn't trip that. I think, I think that given the fact we had to go to practical difficulty versus limited reduction, I would argue that meets that requirement. But I'd like to take it clarified just the record. Yeah, I, to be honest with you, I can't remember what the agenda, I know the abutting lots right next to it are similar size lots, but I don't remember the, the rest. Of the, I, 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 yeah. I, I just can't remember. <laughs> You've tabled this three times. I cannot remember. <laughs> okay. Um, any further discussion on this? And I guess basically I'm saying it, it meets it because of the fact that other items usually come in limited reduction. This is required to go practical difficulty. The reason for that is the rear yard. Um, they're asking, that, you know, the standard setback is 30 feet. They don't have 30 feet. And so the request is more than 5 feet, which is 
the, the limit of the limited reduction, so they have to go to a practical difficulty. On our standard size lot, this would be fine. Okay, thank you. Uh, all in favor of one being met. That's unanimous. Two. The granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use of the fair market value of abutting properties. Please well, start down there again. Uh, definitely not. If anything, it be, will be improving the fair market value of abutting properties. Yeah, the neighborhood is the neighborhood, and I don't think it's going to affect the fair market value of abutting properties, especially when we had one letter on that. That was an improvement, right? Right. I concur with Mr. Jose's and Mr. Crockett. And I agree with the board. I mean, all this is going to do is increase the value of that property and the ones surrounding it. Uh, I tend to agree. I think the uh, granny variance will not have a, a, a desirable change in the character. And I think the character of the design is consistent, so I have no problem with it. Number two being met. That's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, the, the practical difficulty is not the result of an action taken by the applicant prior owner. It's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah. Number three yeah. being met. Which is? Okay. Number four. No other feasible alternative is available to the applicant except a variance. Please. Can't do anything. I mean, the front. The, the because of the dune, dune, basically. Yeah. If that wasn't the dune, they could go with a limited reduction. Is that right? If it wasn't for the front, what forces? I just want to get a clarification of what's triggering it to go to the practical difficulty variance from just a regular. Limited reduction. Again, the, the rear setback, because the lot is not a standard 100 foot deep lot, mm -hmm. they do not and cannot maintain the 30 foot setback to the rear line. Okay. And so to expand the structure vertically in its current position does not meet the 30 foot setback. I may have misunderstood something from Mr. Wilson. He had mentioned something about this, the, the back dune. Or front dune with one of the dunes. Is that what you mentioned, Mr. Wilson? I may have misunderstood. It's in the back dune, the D2. That that's not what's no. triggering it. No. Thank no. you. That's, that's what I need for clarification. Um, any further discussion on this one? I guess my only question would be maybe to Mr. Longstaff. If they built it and went up within the footprint that they should be in, would that like be no space? <laughs> well, you can see on the site plan that I have up on the screen the dashed area is there legal footprint. So you tell me. <laughs> That's your job. <laughs> I just didn't know what they meant. <laughs> yeah. So do you see the do you see the footprint? It's yeah. sort of in the middle there. And that's it. That's the legal footprint. I just looking for dimensions. Um, the legal footprint, uh I don't see a dimension on there. I can't twelve by thirty. Twelve by thirty? Yeah. Questions on this one? Uh, all in favor of this being met? Four. Well, Opposed? Yeah, I always have a problem with this. Excuse me. I always have a problem with this. Okay, good. Uh, well, not good. The uh, hearing <laughs> of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with the surrounding properties. <coughs> Ms. Shoup, you want to start your end? Um, well, I think, you know, bringing up the character code, which I think we're always looking for in that area. And um, it's an improvement. Uh, Ms. Lundstedt, you mentioned something in here about, I think, I just want to clarify it. You mentioned something about it because it's so close, it's got to have sprinkler system. Is that right? Is that that's another one? That's higher. Um, if anything that's less than five feet to the property line or ten feet to an existing abutting structure, another property would have to be fire rated material, not spray. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. Fire rated construction. Okay. And that's this this applies to this. I, I just want to make sure I'm not mixing up. Um, I believe the dimensions that are listed are five point two and five point seven. So, so it doesn't require, doesn't require that. Okay. Uh, and uh any discussion on this one? Seeing none, all in favor? Unanimous. Okay, thank you. Uh it's not in a whole part of the scroll end zone. Oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. Uh, the granting of the variance will not have an unreasonably effect, adverse effect on the nature, natural environment. It's pretty straightforward. No, long yeah. Yeah. Uh, the property is not located in a whole or part of the shoreland zone. I'm in favor of that being that. That's unanimous. Okay. Uh, practical difficulty. I, I thought Mr. Wilson did an excellent job in explaining the practical difficulty, and I would like to actually have that put in a 
Well, I agree 100% with what he wrote. I think it's very well done. I think he explained it perfectly. Um, I don't think we could say it better, personally, for the uh, number two of the particle difficulty requirement. So I'd request that that be my thoughts on that. Anybody wish to add anything or change anything? Or Everybody on the same page with that? That's it. You have a Yes? Okay. All in favor of uh, that being met? That's section uh, B2. Uh, okay, there's four. Yeah, two. There's one post. Okay. okay, so good. Uh, next is a uh, motion as a whole. Any discussion on the motion as a whole? Seeing none. All in favor of the motion as a whole? Four. And opposed? One. Passes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thirteen, a practical difficulty variance discussed by oh, Thomas and uh, Terry Hergold. If I pronounce that correctly. And uh, 39 Ocean Avenue, Assessor's Map U2, Classer 5B. Mr. Wilson, what a surprise. <laughs> We're ready anytime you want. I'd like to give us an overview of what you're up to this time. <laughs> We're all set, huh? <coughs> I'm re representing Thomas and Ter Her Terry Hergley in an application for practical difficulty variance in order to construct a new residence at 39 Ocean Avenue in Higgins Beach and actually is going to replace an existing structure. The property is identified on map U2, lot 5B, the town tax map, and is in the CDCR1 zone. The property is approximately 20 feet, 25 feet of street frontage and a depth of 100 feet. And the total size of the property is 2,523 square feet. In 2011, the property lines were created from a functional division from Richard and Susan to Politano's property and was granted approval from the Zoning Board of Appeals. The property is improved to the one-story residential cottage supported on wood posts with an open crawl space less than two feet of clearance. The owners are requesting the ZBA approval to remove the structure and replace it with a two-story residence. The proposed home would have a concrete foundation and would be located approximately two and a half feet further back from Ocean Avenue in order to comply with the front yard setbacks of the ordinance. The proposed building design has received approval from the administrative review process that is required at Higgins Beach character area. Um, and that states that all the building elements meet the standards of the ordinance. <coughs> the existing cottage does not have a sufficient foundation to reasonably support a new structure, and the existing building framework, including floor joist walls and roof, are inadequate to be used in conjunction with any renovation. The existing mechanical systems must be brought up to code. The heating system is just a propane gas he heater in one of the rooms on the first floor with a direct vent. Um, it also has a uh, circular stairway that goes up to a sleeping loft on the second floor. This area for a sleeping loft is only six foot high at the ridge and slopes down to two foot eight on the knee walls on both sides. The building codes require a minimum seven foot finished air height and area to be considered a habitable room. 
The building is 20 foot 3 inches wide and does not meet the required 8 foot side setback lines. The applicant is seeking relief from the ZBA for the dimensional standards on both side yards in order to reconstruct the two-story structure. Um, it meets the front yard and it meets the rear yards. So the right side um, request is the existing is 3.59 feet at the closest point of the building. It's at a slight angle. And the proposed will be 3.5 feet at the closest point, required 8 feet. A reduction of 4.5 feet is needed to reconstruct the same size building. The left side yard has a setback of 0.17 feet, very close to the line. <coughs> and the proposed is 0.93 required 8 feet, so we need a variance on the practical difficulty of 7.07 .07 feet. And that's basically what the whole thing is all about. Um, the existing structure is totally inadequate. It's primarily used as a, as a cottage. Uh, it's not used in the wintertime. It um, has very little insulation. The floor has no insulation. And it is impossible to take that building and take the roof off and put a second floor without tearing the building down because the structure just could not handle a second floor. Um, we propose to reconstruct the building with just a slight tweak in its location to help accommodate this, the sideline as much as possible. Um, we are not asking for a huge house here, strictly a two-story house <coughs> with two bedrooms and a bathroom on the second floor. Um, has a small existing bedroom on the first floor, which will remain, but will probably use more for a day sitting room than a bedroom. Thank you. Okay, we've uh, got one letter on this. It's from. Uh, uh, now, as you can see on that plan you just brought up, that was the functional division of the property, uh, the Politano's property. Um, all three of those buildings were originally on the same lot. Napolitano lives in the, one, the large house on the right side there right now, and the other two lots were divided off through a functional division approved by the state and approved by the ZBA. Thank you. We have one letter. Uh, it's from uh, the Napolitanos. This is to acknowledge receipt of the notice of the above reference appeal advise that we support without reservation the request of the Hergolese get that right? uh, to demolish the uh, existing dwelling and foundation of 39 Ocean Avenue and replace the existing building with a new pr principal uh, building. We support the Hergolese request for relief from the minimum re required yard side uh, setbacks and support the request that necessary variances are be approved. Hergolese have shared their preliminary plans with us and we have no concerns with the plans. Uh, as with most of the owners on the property, we fully understand that the existing structure is not sufficient to current state to satisfy their long-term plans to permanently occupy the property, but the residents. And that's that. No other phone calls or anything? No. Okay. Open the public to this. Anybody from the public wish to speak? Mm -hmm. Close the public part of the meeting. Back to the board for questions, comments. I just have a few questions. Where are we? Um, electrical. Is it knob and tube? Or? It's not knob and tube, but it's minimal. Fuses? It, 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 you know, they did update it to a breaker. A breaker? Yeah, but the, the electrical is very minimal. It's like one outlet in one room, one in another, you know, that type of stuff. What about the plumbing? What, pardon me? Plumbing. Plumbing. The plumbing is a combination of probably two, maybe three generations of rework with pipes and stuff. I don't think it was a plumber done. I think it was a home repair thing done. Um, the bathroom location has been shifted two or three times, and you have one pipe here that's not in use and another one here that's been spliced onto it. So it's there, it works, but it's not code. And what about egress? Five. Egress in case of a fire. Egress is is well. <coughs> as far as the bedrooms, the bedroom upstairs, the loft area, there isn't. There's one window, but it, you couldn't get an end table through it. It's so small. 
and it doesn't have a, an approved stairway going up to the loft. It's a four-foot circular stairway, which is too small to meet uh, egress from the second floor with a four-foot circular stairway. And it might even be a, 30, a three and a half foot. I didn't quite measure exactly. Um, the windows in the bedroom on the first floor don't meet code. Okay, that's a small little bedroom. And I suppose it meets code going in, but I think it's a two foot eight door, and there's no three foot exterior door, which is required by code. I think they're both, one's two foot eight and one's two foot six in the rear. Okay. Did you so say it doesn't the meet the three foot for that. Did you say the roof was older as well? I'm sorry. The roof. The roof. Is that older as well? The roof is, yeah. That's, that, the roof raft is up there, the original raft is over the house, and I believe the two by six, two foot on center. Um, I don't think they're any closer than that. They might be two foot eight on center. Okay, thank you. Uh, but the two by six, the second floor joists, the two by sixes. Uh, first floor joists, combination of two by six, two by eight, where it's been spliced in a couple spots. Uh, totally uninsulated. Um, That's good, you've answered my question. No, okay. Other questions, thank you. Other questions from the board? Uh, more stuff, anything to add on this? Nope. I do have a question for you regarding the separation, the, uh, the functional division. Does that take away the right to even come before the board if, it was, if it's self-created? No, because it was approved. It was it was approved by the town. <laughs> so the town is basically saying it's okay. So it's not it's not it's not creating a nonconformance because the town already approved the functional division. Should they have approved the functional division? <laughs> Absolutely. That's another question. Um. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So any other questions? I have none on this. Um, so I have a motion or it's just conversation anything anybody else to add I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 2613 as presented second discussion on the motion so let's go through the uh, requirements the need for variances due to the unique circumstance of the property and not the general conditions of the neighborhood that be okay? definitely is uh, uh, su such a tiny piece of land you can hardly walk down each side. I, I've been in the place before, but you can hardly walk <laughs> down either side of the house and not be on to the next property or bumping into the town fence. That's the way the town fence looks. Yeah, that's one thing you probably should look at on the site plans. The property to the left of the house is actually the town parking lot. Okay. Okay. Um, and if you look at the existing site plan, you will see there's a walkway and a fence, a large uh, um, a landscaped area with 10, 12 foot tall trees that the town put in to act as a buffer. That's the, yeah, that's the one I'm talking about right there. Um, on the left hand side, there's an eight, nine foot high fence with 10, 12 foot trees on the parking lot side. And when the town put the parking lot fence up, they came down the property line, stepped it in on the town's property, and came down and around to allow for some space between the house and the fence so they can maintain the property. So the town on that side is a vacant parking lot, and there's no houses, of course, on the parking lot. And it's just a landscaped area. On the other side of the lot, it's fairly close. Ed said to the other house because the functional division created two two yards of about three and a half feet wide. Thanks. Um, I think this is a classic example of the situation at the property. It's obvious and not any others are like that in the area, so I don't have a problem with this. No, that's also, he explained the electrical, plumbing, heating, roofing, structure, it's pretty much non-conforming non and non-functional. Uh, number, all in favor of number one being met? Unanimous number two, the granting of the variance will not produce an undesirable change in the character of the neighborhood and will not have an unreasonably detrimental effect on either the use or the fair market value of abutting properties. Is that what I mean? Definitely not. Would do nothing but improve it. 
based upon the information given, I, I'm thinking it's the same. It would do nothing but improve the property value of this as well as other properties in the area and be definite upgrade. Thank you. We'll say that even though it appears that it might be a little taller than the adjacent properties, they don't see the mind and it will enhance their property values. So I'm good. Thank you. I agree with the comments of the board. I do too. Uh, the, um, I think it'll help with the board overall. And I, this is the one I was thinking of when I was talking about the previous one with the three guys, the five pieces. So that's good to know on that. Uh, all in favor of number two be met? Unanimous, thank you. Number three, the practical difficulty is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Um, the clarification for me was whether or not the, the functional division created a problem. And we've been told, no, it doesn't. So I have no other problems with that. Any? Yeah, Mr. Long, stop explaining the town approved it, so. Okay. All in favor of number three being met? That's unanimous. Number four, no other feasible alternatives available to the applicant except a variance. That's a, that's a fact. Normally I'd have a problem with that. That's why I asked all the questions that I asked to be able to understand that the house is pretty much not non-functional and non-conforming and fire trap. So. On for number uh, four being met. Yeah, and this number five, the agreement of the variance will result in bringing the applicant's property more nearly into conformance with the surrounding properties. I don't know about that one. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> I mean, the good news is it's going to be safe compared to what it is now. And if everybody's moving in that direction, which I think it is, that would meet that requirement for me. Right, and they also said they're moving the building actually back to further conform to the front yard setback. Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, all in favor of number five being met? Unanimous, thank you. Six, grand variance will not have an unreasonably adverse effect on the natural environment. Not really changing the footprint other than moving it back, so. The only question I have, nothing's going to happen with those trees because they're on the town's property, right? Uh, nothing, no. Okay. All in favor of number uh, 16, then? That's unanimous, thank you. Uh, property is not located in, in whole or in part within a shoreland zone. That's being that being met. All in favor? That's unanimous. And then again, the practical difficulty of case with a strict application of dimensional standards of the ordinance to the property for which the variance is sought would both preclude the use of the property which is permitted in the zone in which it is located and also would result in significant economic injury to the applicant. It's pretty um, straightforward. So uh, just nail this one down a little bit. Would you like to take this one on? Oh, I'm all set with that. I think the applicant has done a good job at, you know, describing the current condition of the home and how it's not, you know, he's not able to occupy it year-round. It's not DJ or insulated. And, um, Stop that one. <laughs> Go ahead. So, I mean, they want to have a house that they can function living year round. Yeah, it's unsafe right now. Um, I think that the, the this, you can't follow the strict application of this property. It's just not possible. <coughs> so, if, if, if you did that, it would just eventually, I mean, maybe they could do something with it long, but not the way it should be done and not the safe way. And the cost would be very expensive to try and retrofit it. Um, the, the sistering of the joists, that's the problem. Uh, overall, as you pointed out, brought forward, I just think it's a, it meets the requirement of the, death, the opportunity to bring it forward to this board uh, as, a, as a practical difficulty. All in favor of uh, B2 and B1 being met? That's unanimous. Okay, thank you. And uh, as the motion as a whole, any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the motion? That's unanimous. Thank you. <coughs> thank you very much. You can take a 20 minute recess if you want. No.
the appeal is number 2614. It's a variance request by uh, Unistar Corporation, Houston Roads. So this is map R73, parcel 18. Welcome. Thank you. I'm Dan Bacon, Bacon. <laughs> former planning director, um, planner for Goral Palmer Consultants, and it's nice to be back. Um, see you. So it's ironic that I would be, you know, presenting for an, a variance appeal, but um, I'm pleased to be here. I'm working on behalf of Unitel uh, Corporation on their on their natural gas infrastructure upgrades that they've been working on for a number of years uh, in Scarborough and particularly along the Eastern Road and Eastern Trail. Um, and there's a few staff here that are here to answer technical questions if, if I can't, if you have any. Um, so there's a key transmission line for Unitel that runs down the Eastern Trail, Eastern Road, and um, this transmission line also is a, a feeder to a distribution lines. And in a number of locations, gate stations are necessary for transmission lines to step the, the level of gas pressure down from a transmission level down to a distribution level. Um, and if you use the Eastern Trail, you'll recognize that there is already one of these gate stations. Uh, behind the public works garage on the Eastern Trail, um, about a mile, a mile and a half from uh, where this variance application is proposed for. There also used to be the same type of gate station close by um, to the proposed site, um, up Eastern Road, about 1,500 feet just before Black Point Road. That was in place um, until about 10 years ago when they removed it uh, with goals of modernizing uh, the infrastructure. And over the past couple of years, as they've been expanding their uh, transmission line and distribution line services and growing gas, uh, natural gas accommodations in Scarborough, um, they started to look for a site for a new gate station. Um, and it really needs to be in the corridor between Black Point Road and um, the Public Works Facility 1 that I mentioned earlier. And it turns out it's a harder nut to crack than um, they initially thought, and that's really based on the evolution of the Eastern Village. There's a neighborhood obviously building out there that continues to build towards uh, Eastern Road. Um, there's been a few new homes added along Eastern Road and otherwise there's conservation land, um, obviously the Scarborough Marsh and the, the fish and wildlife property uh, to, to the south and to the west. Um, so as they worked through that process, uh, they did, I sh actually I should mention that um, typically uh, gate stations and utility infrastructure actually can go in road right of ways. They don't typically need their own individual lots. Um, so under zoning and under public utility um, rules, often you'll have these right in a public road without setbacks, without lot sizes at all. Um, that's where the gate station was before, closer to Black Point Road. It was right, right along Eastern Road, um, much like the one behind Public Works is right along the trail. And it's in the right of way uh, for the Eastern Trail. So that was an option and, and remains an option for Unitel but it's really a, a hardship and a constraint to put a gate station in the right-of-way as this area has evolved, as people use Eastern Road, as more parking is added down at the trailhead. Um, so thinking about that and working through those issues, uh, Unitel ended up approaching the sanitary district as an alternate rather than go in the right-of-way and make it awkward for the town and use of the Eastern Road they work, began working with a sanitary district, which owns the property that we're going to discuss <coughs> in a few minutes, um, to site the gate station there. So it's just out of the right of way um, and away from, to the extent possible, all the abutters and the use of Eastern Road. So that's what brings us to this application. And this plan shows in red Eastern Road. Um, like I mentioned, this is Eastern Village. This is a residential neighborhood. There's a single family home here. There's a home there with additional developable land. 
and then Scarborough Marsh to to the bottom of this plan. <coughs> This is a zoomed in uh, version of the plan that shows the limits of the proposed gate station just adjacent to the eastern eastern trail. This is right by the trailhead um, to the eastern trail. There's a parking area next door. Um, and this is really the transition from the eastern road to the eastern trail. Based on the activities on the sanitary district property, as well as the wetland constraints. Um, UNITEL is seeking a variance to have a smaller lot than is allowed for in the resource protection zone. So the zone that applies to this property, and this is the zone line here, um, so it's residential zoning to uh, above the line and below the line is resource protection. The resource protection zone typically requires a 30,000 square foot lot for activities um, in that zone. And there's not many activities allowed in the resource protection zone. Um, public utilities like this are. Um, they're considered essential services. And they're allowed to be in corridors in the resource protection zone, or they're allowed to be just outside of corridor, utility corridors, to the extent uh, reasonable as determined by the planning board. So UNITEL is proposing to, to be the, the latter, to be on a lot right outside the utility corridor, which is also the eastern trail. And given the nature of the property, um, they can't achieve a 30,000 square foot lot size. And there's two or three reasons they can't achieve that. Just to, just below this um, 13,440 square foot lot is the marsh, is wetlands. Um, and wetlands can't be counted towards lot area in the resource protection zone, even though the lot overall could accommodate that 30,000 square foot, um, that 30,000 square foot minimum. To the, to the right, from your perspective, to the right of this proposed lot is the, the town parking lot for the Eastern Trail that was recently expanded to provide more capacity for using the trail. And the town has an easement in place um, to use that property uh, for parking. The town also has intentions of using some, the property just to the, to the right for future rest facil restroom facilities for Eastern Trail users. So. Though there is potential to get to 30,000 square feet to meet the minimum lot size, um, those are the constraints that are in the unique characteristics that are dictating that this lot can't achieve that minimum lot size. Um, so that's really the circumstances of this application. Um, and it's, it's, it's a bit of an interesting uh, situation in that for a number of years, the town wasn't necessarily requiring public utility facilities to meet minimum lot sizes. Minimum lot sizes are kind of rightfully geared towards residential development, commercial development, where you have a home, you have a business, there are, there's activities going on. Um, there are, there's a need to have a certain size lot for separation to, to abutters and um, the various land uses occurring. And so throughout town, there are public utilities that, that really only have the land area necessary to have the utility. Like by your office, Mark, um, there's a pump station on the corner of Route 1 in Willowdale. That pump station uh, is a public utility for wastewater. It doesn't meet the minimum lot size. It, it's sized to accommodate the pump station, the little driveway for, for coming and going, et cetera. And that sort of hap that's happened throughout town. So it's sort of a unique situation for a utility to actually need to meet a minimum lot size. And that's another uh, re reason for the, the seek and the variance uh, through the board is that it's, it's a bit uncustomary. Um, so that's the background on the project. Um, and I'm happy to walk through how it meets the criteria or great. turn it back to you. In a second, that'd be great. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Longstreet, if anyone has 
Um, as <clears throat> the ordinance requires, I did forward this variance request to uh, Mike Morris at the Department of Environmental Protection. He's the Shoreland Zoning Coordinator. They're required to, we're required to forward any variance applications to them for comment. Um, his comment was that yes, the interpretation, our interpretation of the ordinance is correct. 30,000 square feet is the minimum lot size. There is no other um, option for utilities for a lesser lot size or anything like that. And he obviously had stated one of the, the things that we had stated early on in our conversations with Unitil is that, you know, it would be much easier or much better from a, a, um, a land procurement perspective for them to lease property and not have to worry about creating a lot and that would kind of get them out. That apparently was not doable um, either because the sanitary, I, as I understand it, I don't think the sanitary district was amenable to that, I'm, right. I think was the, the issue. Um, so, you know, we're, we're, we're back to square one on that. Um, that's all that DEP had to say on the matter is that um, there was no other provision and they did recommend the lease as well as a way to, to, to do this. The other option, as Dan had already stated, is to just forego this and put it in the right of way where they, they have the right to do that. Um, it wasn't the best, most desirable location for this type of setup um, for reasons which I, I'm sure they're happy to further explain if, if you have questions about it. So, um, correct me. When they put the Eastern Trail in as a recreational path, didn't the gas company have to basically work with the town and the, the Eastern Trail and give, give that ability to use that property? Is that my recollection, recollection from way back when? Yeah, there's a number of easements over the Eastern Trail's right-of-way. Um, there's, there's the gas easement. It's 33, 33 feet wide along here. It actually gets wider as you get closer to Black Point Road where the old gate station was. There's also uh, sewer, sewer line easements. Um, so it's my understanding that you know, those easements allow for natural gas infrastructure. Um, but they have to be cited in a way that's not also that's not interfering with the other activities in the right of way. So, um, in this area, actually moving from this point towards Black Point Road, the right of way is actually 66 feet wide. The road surface there is, you know, 18 or 20. It's a narrow road as you come down from Black Point Road. So um, there's. But it's a challenging right of way given everything that's going on in the abutters involved. Um, there's obviously more homes and more concern about siting a gas station close to a number of homes in that direction and also winter maintenance and, and sharing the right of way to have a facility like this is exponentially more challenging than to have it just outside the right of way um, on this location so that it's you don't have those user conflicts. You don't have the conflicts with homes nearby. Um, you don't. You have a better layout for the facility. And, and the gas company was there well before the Eastern Trail. So that, I, guess I think the sewer line and the gas line were in place before the trail. Yeah. Right, so it's almost the opposite. Uh, the way I look at it, I remember way back when, in 1999 or 2000 when they were doing the Eastern Trail, I remember there was a lot of work done with the gas company at the time, not used to help, but whoever was the predecessor. Yeah. Probably the three predecessors now. But if I remember correctly, that was, there was, they worked really hard with everybody to get that to happen. And I, I don't think, it, again, it's my personal opinion, but this is weird. It's not going to fit a box. Mm. But at the same vein, it's created partially because they helped with the Eastern Trail. If I'm going back to my memory correctly, you may remember better than I do. Um, right, there's been discussion about community services as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't, to me, it's just smart business. And yeah, it doesn't fit the box. But I don't know how to, the alternative is not good. The sanitary district is a sanitary district. We're not going to get them to change. Um, I don't know what we could do with the town. I don't know if the town could give that. I don't think, the reality is it's just, He's playing with paper. Nothing changes. Mm -hmm. Thirty thousand feet. Doesn't matter <clears throat> because it's 
stunt land that can be used anyway other than for that, and it's going to be moved over 20 feet. Am I correct? You just, if, if you move it in 20 feet to be in the right of way. Right. Uh, it makes no sense to fight this, in my opinion. It's just common sense that it works. And it doesn't fit any of the criteria. I don't believe. But I don't care. But I think it needs to be done. I think it's the right thing to do. I think part of it's created by the fact that they worked with the town to put the Eastern Trail in. And had they not worked with the town and kept it just a gas area, wouldn't have that problem. They could put it anywhere they wanted. Wouldn't interfere with anybody. And that's why I, I support it. What's the theory behind having 30,000 square feet? Is that just a number that somebody established? That's the state. The state sets guidelines for shoreland zoning, and it came from the state guidelines for resource protection, a uh, minimum lot size of, thir of 30,000 square feet. In the resource protection zone, there, and Brian can rattle off better than I can, certainly, but there are very few land uses that are allowed. It's intended to be for resource protection, um, kind of wildlife uses, educational uses related to natural resources and essential services and things that kind of have to be there to serve the public um, in addition but to... This, this, is an, this is an allowable use. It's Correct. It's just not enough, enough land. But it's more than enough land for you to do what you want to do, right? It's sized to accommodate the facility and buffering to the the neighbors and to the to the wetlands. On this side, there's the marsh and wetlands on this side. Um, so that's another reason to limit the lot size and to have the facility be outside the right of way, but close to the right of way to avoid impacts to the resources. It kind of makes sense to me. <laughs> Why don't we go through the criteria? Um, did you want to add something? I just, I would just add that, um, as Dan had just mentioned, that there are very limited um, uses in the resource protection <coughs> zone. Uh, essential services is a permitted use approved by planning board, so this would then have to go to the planning board if if it was approved at the zoning board level. Um, it's not a permit that I can issue um, uh, without planning board review. So. Um, and there are very, as Dan said, very few other um, things like filling an earth moving of less than 10 cubic yards as a CEO permit. So I can permit <laughs> a truckload of fill going there. <laughs> that's that's about it. Timber harvesting is another one, and, and um, you know, low impact recreational uses. So I mean, you can't build a house in the RP. You can't do much of anything in the RP. Um, why don't we go through the requirements now, if you're ready. Oh, why don't I open the public again? No letters on this or phone calls or anything? We did. Public to speak to this issue. Say none. Quote the public part. Let's go through the criteria. Uh, any question cannot yield, uh, yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. Why don't you jump in with Dan with whatever you'd like to add on that. Um, as in the application, we indicate this parcel has been established to accommodate a gate station that could otherwise occur in the existing Eastern Road and utility right away, but it would be a challenge to do so. Um, the applicant is acquiring this parcel for the sole use of it as a location for a gate station that's been designed and sized only for that use. Given this, there's no virtually, there's, there are virtually no other reasonable uses of the land that could occur, particularly given what's allowed for in the resource protection, as Brian indicated. Um, if it helps with the zoning board's uh, review. Unitile is certainly amenable to having any approval restrict any other uses uh, on this site. You, know, you may not want an undersized lot to be created for other uses that could come along down the road, say the gate station gets relocated. So that's something that um, could be considered by the zoning board if that adds you know, protection. Thank you. Uh, the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property, the criterion. Uh, the parcel size and location has been intentionally configured for this unique circumstance um, and to deliberately avoid encroachment and impacts to the wetlands and natural resources in this area and to limit the developed area to only what is needed for a gate station. Uh, the essential use Gate station is unique and uncommon, an uncommon land use that is not shared by neighboring properties. 
further, it's a unique circumstance in that the applicant is pursuing this variance to balance the interests of the town, um, neighbors, and the use of the Eastern Road. Okay, thank you. Um, the granting of the variance will not uh, alter the essential character of the neighborhood. That's just a... No. Yeah, the variance is intended to really provide the best alternative to maintain the character of the neighborhood. Um, if it was located in a different location, maybe it could alter, you know, uh, affect the essential character of the neighborhood. So this location is intended to, to mitigate that, um, and particularly with the location, but also landscaping and, and buffering, it's really the best location for this facility in the corridor. Thank you. Uh, the uh, hardship is not a result of the action taken by the applicant or prior owner. So under this criteria, um, feeling was that really the kind of the unique zoning restrictions are driving this, um, where this facility could be in the middle of the road or in the right of way with no lot set minimum lot size, no uh, no setbacks, and so you know, that would be a hardship on the town, would be a hardship on the neighbors. So this is really uh, a hardship that's created by the zoning expecting um, a minimum lot size for something that in other locations doesn't need, doesn't need to meet any standards. Uh, thank you. All right, uh, Boyd comments, questions? The last one for D. Um, hardship does not create an action rate result or action taken by the applicant or prior owner. Unitel bought the property or is buying the property from the sanitary district because they knew this was going to be happening when they did that, that they were going to be in this situation? They, when they went into negotiations with the sanitary district, they did not know that it was going to be treated this way. Was, um, so that's not an excuse, but that wasn't a known challenge given how they operate in all other circumstances where they're in right-of-ways or they're on lots that don't meet minimum lot sizes. So um, it's obviously a known issue now, um, but it was, I wasn't involved at that point, but it was a surprise to you to tell that given how they're treated elsewhere, um, they stumbled across this minimum lot size requirement. So. Other questions or comments from the board? I would uh, just, uh, Mr. Chairman, I'd just add, I, I, I mean, I do think that um, for what it's worth, um, they did explore uh, the other option of leasing and couldn't get it, couldn't get the other party to agree. So they did make a good faith effort, I believe, to try to circumvent the need to be here in front of you folks. Right. And again, I, I'm going to come back to, it, it wasn't the last one or the previous one, it's the company before that, or maybe two companies before that. This wouldn't be an issue if they hadn't worked with us going over the, over the river when they yeah. put the bridge in. They worked with us, you know, one of the advantages of institutional memory is that they have created, in essence, the previous company, too bad, created the problem by working with the town. And to me, that they shouldn't be penalized for working with the town. So I, to me, it's just that simple. You're working with the town and doing the right thing creates the problem because if there wasn't an eastern trail, they could put it right in the middle of the, the, the road and nobody would care. But it cares because people use it and it's made it, it's helped everybody and they've worked as a good neighbor. And that, to me, that's, that's, as, as, that's my logic based on, on uh, and whether or not it meets the criteria we can discuss. But I mean, are they also still working with community services for the expansion of the trail over there? Because I thought they had a facility that was around Pleasant Hill Road or something in there that the community services was looking at an easement or they something. Have a, they have property, um, are you talking about off Pleasant Hill Road? Um, CMP is working with okay. Eastern Trail in that area. But Unitel does have property at the end of the other end of Eastern Road, where the other parking area is for the northern section of the trail. And I, I believe, 
perhaps some of the parking is, is on Unitel's property. You know, where it Yeah, no, and what I'm getting at is just what the yeah. chair was getting at, that they're yep. continuing to make efforts to support the town and the Eastern Trail, so I think it's really a non-issue. Yeah. Thanks. That's good. I, I, you can't say any better than that. My, my opinion is that they, they're a good neighbor. Treat people the way they treat you in a reasonable life rule. And I think they brought value. There wouldn't be a problem if they didn't bring value. It just wouldn't be here. And granted, it's two companies ago, but it doesn't matter. It's still the same concept. And if we set a precedent of other than working with the community and, and the utilities like this, the next time we want it to, to do something over utility land, I can tell you what they're going to say. I think, it's that, I think it's that important that whatever the requirements are, that, that's just where I'm coming from. Okay, so uh, do I have a motion? Or? I'll make a motion to approve appeal number 2614 is presented. Second. Okay. And any discussion on that? Let's go through the criteria. Everybody ready? Um, Uh, the land in question cannot yield a reasonable return unless the variance is granted. Um, they need to be able to do something. They're going to be bumping up against the town on one hand, which I suppose could lease the parking lot, but who cares? It has no effect. It has no effect. They need to do something. The alternative of the reasonable return is to put it right in the way of something they've helped to work with us on. And that doesn't make sense. It's not reasonable. It's that the, the, it needs to be where it is. It's gas. You're not going to move it two towns over. It's there where it is. Mm -hmm. uh, that's why, a, in my opinion, is Matt. It's yeah, and Mr. Longstaff also told us there's very, very limited things that can go there. So, any discussion? More discussion on? Well, I agree with Mr. Crockett. I mean, they said there's not many uses for the land in that district there. So, um, okay. All in favor? Number one, number one being Matt. Unanimous. Number two. Uh, that the need for the variance is due to the unique circumstance of the property and not to the general conditions in the neighborhood. That's obvious. It's yeah. fits it perfectly. No brainer. <laughs> <laughs> Seldom does it. <laughs> That's probably the only one that really fits nicely. <laughs> All in favor of number two being uh, beaming that. That's unanimous. Thank you. Uh, C. That the granting of the variance will not alter the essential character of the locality. In fact, it will do the exact opposite. It will it'll protect the character that they helped create. But yeah, they're going out of their way to make sure that things can stay the same way that they can and people can use Eastern Trail and the homes won't be affected. I and mean, you can move it close to those homes, but those homes are on top of each other right now down there. Mm. Some planning guy did that. Um, <laughs> I don't know if you're receiving that. Yeah, that's okay, thank you. D, the hardship is not a result of an action taken by the applicant or prior owner. No, it's probably the third owner that worked with the town. So it isn't an issue of the prior owner or the, uh, or the current owner, but the fact is they worked with the town. That's what's creating our chip. Well, the other thing, too, like Mr. Longstaff had said, that's why I asked the questions, that they tried to work with the sanitary district to lease, and it just wasn't going to work for them. So, and I don't think it was anything on their part. I think it was probably more on the sanitary district's part, but they and did explore the option available, in my mind. You looked at a lot of options at, at, from reading the information. Right. It's a could you think of any other option uh, response staff that would meet the requirement? No. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that was the right answer. Why are you asking me? <laughs> you have a uh, all in favor of deeding that? That's unanimous. And uh, motion for the final motion being approved. All in favor of the motion as requested. That's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, right. I think you're going for a while. I think Brian didn't either. Remember you tabled them. Board was, uh, Mark Maroon, who in it? Pardon? <laughs> we're just, we're just chat. Okay. Um, any uh, board comments tonight? I have a procedural 
simple question. Um, when an application is tabled, does the ordinance require it to be first at the next meeting? Uh, not necessarily. No, it's the option of the board. I think we did skip that. I don't think we tabled anything. Yeah. Well, the two things we did table, we got approved for only one. I would just ask the uh, remind the board that we're still down a member. So if anyone knows of anyone who would be interested in applying for zoning board of appeals, we would gladly take application. Flexible hours. <laughs> the benefits are amazing. Um, any other comments from the board? No, I'll entertain a motion to. Uh, Mr. Second. All in favor? That's unanimous. Thanks very much.